What's up, fellow droolers of the mouth? And uh, all right, one more song. Wake up, everybody. Wake up. Wake up. It's time for Burnell. It's Burnell time. Yes. Yes. This is going to be the second one. Let's see if there's anything interesting that happened on Twitter. Where it took me and do this and do that. We're not doing that. It's business as usual here on DSP Gaming. We play games. We have fun. If you guys like it, you support it. The week is going slow. Tough through it. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. Tips very low now. But I've noticed. Tips very low right now. The week is going slow. It gets to me. My life is ruined. This is how my life is ruined. Losers out there thinks that they know shit. Kiss my fucking ass and eat my shit right now. Full oh, where's my soundboard? Full what was that even called? Book. Everything's booked. Everything's booked. Can't do anything crazy. I want to have sex with your wife. Okay, there we go. I don't even have enough to buy groceries. It sucks. The week is going slow. Tough through it. So how are you doing? Play, 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 play. Tips very I have to curate my content. That I've noticed. The chap very low. Right Suck a dog now. off. The is going slow. <laughs> These are so stupid, man. I need some new clips. What was the last one? Oh, you're milking a human. Okay, let me just uh, cut it together because last time I couldn't. Kiss my fucking ass and eat my shit now. 
You're milking them. Let's uh, let's hear how it's gonna sound, and then we're gonna go right into it. Okay. Uh, here's a quick intro. Here, wake up. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, disgusting that sound. Introducing the chocolate starfish. Welcome everybody. I'm the the chocolate starfish, and we're gonna watch Phil today because why not? There's no bad day to watch Phil. Phil is good every day, all day, twenty four seven, twenty five seven. Uh, anyways, let me just finish milking the human. You're milking a human. Okay, there you go. I think that's a good clip. So um, I don't know what happened really. I just wanted to kind of catch up. Uh, I've been away for a couple days. Uh, well, we have some timestamps under this pre-stream, so I'm going to go by this uh, because the latest one doesn't have uh, timestamps. And DSP has left a test comment. I don't even know what he was testing. Like, what are you testing? <laughs> you know how the comments work. Oh, anyways. Um, what else we got? Okay, let's, let's see what we have in this one. So discussion on podcast format and upcoming content. So this is just schedule and talking about not having anything to do, I guess. Uh, mention of technical difficulties from yesterday's stream and upcoming co-op plans. So we just cycling that same story about Cat and why Cat doesn't want to play the game. Because oh, there was also a, a very interesting bit about the job market and... Um, how Kat can't get a job that she wants, even though she's not really qualified or experienced to get a job that she wants. But she can't settle on getting a job that is offered because it's beneath her or something. It's very interesting. We're going to talk about that at some point. But at first, I want to get through my coffee because if, if we get into that first, I'm going to be fucking salty. Because uh, here is noon. Because today I don't have work to do, so I can make fun of Phil all day. There we go. Except it's not going to be all day. Well, you fucking know what I mean. We got delay of the co-op stream. Explanation of wife's schedule. Wife's schedule disruption causing delay. Damn, they disrupted her schedule. Then we got uh, Elden Ring. This is getting skipped. We got React Show. This is getting skipped. Uh, gameplay stream schedule. Man, this shit is fucking miserable. All this. Then we got history of DSP gaming and comment moderation. So you know what this is going to be. You literally know what this is going to be. It's like, oh, back in the day, all my comments were like really positive And they were like, Phil, we love you. You're the best. You're the greatest streamer. But then the, this is how you don't play movement started. And those fucking idiot mouth droolers, they wanted to be in those videos. So they would leave the most disgusting, the most offensive, vile, racist comments under my videos. And people were like, Phil, we can't even watch your videos anymore, man, because the comments are just so disgusting, vile, disgusting races, vile, disgusting cavits, okay? So I had to turn them off. Then this is it. This is basically it. Uh, and then the next topic, of course, is uh, enabling comments on previous videos. Discussion about turning on comments for older videos and technical, technical challenges. Technical challenges. Technical challenges, yes. And potential implications of bulk updates on the channel's videos. Okay, what, what the fuck is this? I, I need to see this. And the next topic is great. But I'll, I'll tell you when it comes. Is all new videos at that point had comments turned on? Maybe that's the case? Of course, we're wearing a shirt again that is totally does not fit. Oh, yeah. Speaking of not fitting, uh, we got another new intro. Basically, two of them. So this one is the first one. And the other one with the river, I'll show you in a little bit. But, like, just because you can get something new doesn't mean it's good for you or that you should use it. Because this shit doesn't fit the theme of anything else. Why am I not at work? Because I don't have any today. I'm, I'm good for today. Already clocked out. So, oh, wait. Was that the... Did it even play the shitty chords? No, this is just silence. Come on. No, no way I sound pitched down. Do I got the robot voice again? There's no way this is happening. You are a liar and a fraud. And no, yeah, it, it looks perfectly okay. And then we got the, the normal thing where, uh, you know, the normal intro. But this, like... 
okay, how many things that happen before the podcast even starts that don't fit his actual brand? They don't fit his actual like stream design and well, his his brand identity. This shit here, we got a random font that is not used anywhere else. We got random colors. We got random CGI footage of whatever this is. Then we got another font with a color scheme that is not used ever again. And then we get into the podcast where, and this is going to shock you, we have yet another font and another layout that does not match anything else. And we got a t-shirt that doesn't match anything else thematically and aesthetically. And we got a background that is just, well, it's this background that doesn't match anything. It's React Day. And, and also it's React Day on top of everything. This shit sucks. It sucks. It's miserable. Uh, yesterday he had a very strange day, I guess. Because on one stream he made like $170 something. And on the other one he made $5. And... From what I've heard, now this is hearsay, he was begging a lot, which is kind of weird. Uh, so apparently maybe there's some um, some serious stuff happening in the in the background, behind the scenes, you know, backstage at the Burnell production premises. Across all three of my channels. Across all three of his channels. We have a nice chill podcast. and we. <laughs> this is so miserable, man. The way he tries to sell it up. Um, okay, what, what was I going to do in the first place? Enabling comp- yeah, fuck that. Uh, next up we got acknowledgement of rage issues in gaming and importance of learning from losses. Obviously, DSP is the first guy to know something about that because he's taken a lot of losses and he's learned um, not much. Behavior from the audience. Yeah, that's well said. It does really look like a 90s like online forum because it's, it's all so kind of bootleg and outdated. And I would say it has some charm to it, but it, it kind of doesn't. It, it kind of doesn't. Because <laughs> charm means that you, like when you make something and you put your soul into it and you put your heart into it and you like actually try, even if it doesn't work because, you know, you don't have the talent, you don't have the experience, there's some kind of charm that, that translates through it, that, that comes through it. Like with The Room, because The Room is a, a terrible movie on many levels. But when you see how much effort Tommy Wiseau put into this being like a sincere, genuine story, it does um, come across as very charming. None of this is like that, because there's no soul in any of that. It's just a bunch of assets that have been randomly put together, thrown together, and stuck together with duct tape, and none of it makes any coherent sense. No, but the audience that, that says that does toxic things to me will do it toxic things to me if I'm the nicest guy on the planet. It's just because they're toxic people looking to create a narrative. We talk. No, if he was the nicest guy on the planet, nobody would really care about him. Um, I, I'm pretty sure. Talk about. Because I mean, there's no, there's no scenario in which Dark Side Phil remains himself the way he is, and also he's the nicest guy on the planet. For him to be the nicest guy on the planet, he would have to have a fundamental, radical change in everything that he is. About this two days ago, it doesn't matter what I say or do. They're just there to make me look like a villain. But I'll agree with you that. There is a rage issue when I play fighting games, um, particularly when I, I'm losing. Hey, shout out to Japan, and our boy like Hemingway. What's up, dude? Said that if you're What's up, a dude? Game and you lose as long as you learn something from the loss, <clears throat> right? What does he and learn from the loss? That the other guy's an idiot and that he cheated and that he's a mouth driller. And he also learns how to quit the dashboard real fast. He's really good at it. Not a loss. It's actually you're just collectively gaining knowledge that'll make you better over time. But if you play a game, and you just get trounced. And it's like, dude, I have no idea why that happened. So I, I'm not gonna I'm never gonna learn. That's what's frustrating. You know what I mean? So uh yeah, and I need that's something I need to work on. Oh, let's see here. There are times when I'm turning into your podcast. Oh well, he says that's something I need to work on. So technically he is correct. There is a lot of work to be done on this. But at some point, okay, at some point you gotta start thinking about it. You're 42, and you're still having rage issues in video games, even though you've been playing video games for like 20 years, and you've always had rage issues, and they've always kind of been like this. Are you working on it? Is there any kind of improvement? Because I don't think there is. I love it. I want to send some support, but I don't. You don't do shoutouts till the end of the show. My work can sometimes call me away, and I miss the end of the podcast, and sometimes the show. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to defend him on this. The opportunities to support. 
I think I speak for most people when I say we really enjoy the instant feedback from tips and super chats. My suggestion is you do shout outs throughout the podcast. I think that would make it more engaging for the audience and guys like me who like these shout outs won't put it off and possibly lose the opportunity. Um, although I appreciate that and I understand where you're coming from. Right. First, in the context of his podcast, it's going to fucking destroy the pacing. Like these podcasts are going to be like 16 hours long if he starts reading shout outs the moment they come. Because, like, he's going to be in the middle of some story about, like, Activision being a shitty company or something. And he's going to be super happy, like, just shitting on them. And then he's going to get, like, a tip that talks about Baldur's Gate. And then for the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about Baldur's Gate. It's going to be a complete mess. And also, it's in the best interest of the viewer that the, the pacing is retained as much as possible. I try and play all my pop-ups whenever they come through, but sometimes we're during a segment where that's going to fuck up the whole pacing, so I just leave them for later. The problem with that is on the podcast, I have segments that are focused. There you go, and he basically says the same thing, but for like 10 minutes. So, for example, I might have a topic I really want to cover today that's important, whether it's a news story or it's an update about something going on on the channel, and I got a story to tell or I got a lot to explain. And if I'm every two seconds stopping what I'm doing to do a shout out and stopping what I'm doing because of shout out, shout out, shout out, we'll never get through it. And a lot of the times you lose your train of thought, right? It would be like, you know, I'm telling a story and then I have to keep interrupting myself. And I know, where was I? Uh, da, da, you know, and so that's that does suck. And I agree with you. <clears throat> it makes sense to get that instant gratification. It does. Oh, I hate the term instant gratification because it's like. It's it's always referred to something that is instant gratification is like considered a bad thing, I guess, or at least he uses it in, in that context. Instant gratification. It's really annoying. At the same time, you know that the end of the podcast is when I do all the collective shout outs, correct? So because of that. Yeah, but they know they're just telling you they don't like it being like that. That's that's kind of it. Just watch the end of the podcast every day. And I, I mean, if you can't be here live, I get it. It's on demand. Just open up the show, sc scoot to the end of the podcast when you know the shout outs are, and there you go. And FYI, within 24 hours of every podcast uh, being uh, posted, there's AI generated timestamps <laughs> in, the, in the description. <laughs> yes, there is. So you can literally click on the timestamp to skip exactly to the point where the shout outs begin interesting enough why don't we get it on the on the actual timeline of the video like everybody's timestamps i don't know i guess it's because he's lazy because if it comes down to like op boone doing them i don't think he would mind doing them because he's put in a lot of fucking effort into dsp's channel that didn't pay off and didn't mean anything um but i don't know i guess he's lazy and there you have it okay the the instant shout outs are definitely available during gameplay because in gameplay you could pause the game you don't lose your train of thought the game's yeah. still running right? <laughs> you fuck up instead of fucking up the podcast you fuck up the playthrough by pausing the game so you can read a message somebody said it just it uh it's great it's great keep doing it <clears throat> for me telling you know doing a segment that's very targeted at a certain topic to interrupt it constantly and interrupt that stream of consciousness or that train of thought or that thing i'm trying to say it doesn't benefit. I, I know for a fact because it's happened. There's been streams where I'm, I'm doing something and I get interrupted. I come back like, yeah, okay, oh, we get it. Let's move on to the next thing. This dude fucking like, damn, it's such a simple point. You could have spent a minute explaining and then we're all good. Everybody knows everything. And of course, <laughs> this is an official topic. It's called balancing instant feedback with podcast structure. Yeah, dude, fuck off. Like actually fuck off. Oh, uh, this is good. This is good. Some great a good goals one. for more money. Okay. Would be reacting to fair criticism videos of DSP. Uh, no, because uh, according to him, they don't exist. There's no fair criticism videos of DSP. Because you... The moment you say one thing that is canonically incorrect, you've been completely discredited. You, you got no validity whatsoever. Like when... Um, I don't know, when Turkey Tom does a documentary and calls WWE champions WWE superstars, and then it, it feels like, yeah, well, you see, he got this wrong. Why would he get anything else right? Look at the fucking dunce. Like the Mouth Turkey Tom documentary and other This Is How You Don't Plays. Even the haters donate for stuff like this, bringing back this for patron goals and tips, etc. Well, first of all, 
I tried reacting to it. This is how you don't play. Do you remember the nightmare that created? Oh, that was so much fun. Because the uh, evil AJ decided to be petty about it, which I respect very much. I respect people that are petty uh, for the sake of entertainment. So he he privated the video. So DSP couldn't find it. And he was salty. <laughs> and also, later he thought... His noise gate has made his throat clear and snort sound worse when the gate only partly blocks them. Oh yeah, I, I've noticed that. But also on my headphones, I think it's on my speakers... Uh, under a certain threshold, there is no noise. So I, I don't even get to hear them most of the time. Uh, so after Evil AJ privated the video, a DSP thought that AJ was going to copyright strike him, so he was, like, super scared. And then he did receive copyright strikes by, quote-unquote, wing strolls. I, I don't even fucking know. Like, I legit don't know what the fuck was going on with that. And there's no verification or confirmation who sent the strikes or whatever the fuck happened. Uh, so he was basically pleading. He was like on his knees, metaphorically, um, talking about like, well, if you if you take me down and you take down all the other lol cows, who are you going to make fun of? Yeah, it was um, it was really pathetic. It was really pathetic. And then he got over the copyright strikes because the way they work is if you dispute the strike, um, as long as uh, you're, well, basically a person who issued it, doesn't do anything within like 10 days, you're going to be perfectly good and the strike's going to go away. That's exactly what everybody said was going to happen. That's exactly what happened. And then he was acting like he never knew that was going to happen. And he was, uh, he had like a, a little bit of a, how would you even call that? A victory lap. Let's call that a victory lap. He actually even made, um, he made a short about it. And I remember how it's called. Uh, DSP Gaming Trolls Defeated. Epic, epic, epic. If I can even find that one, because it was a short. So I don't know how things work on YouTube, because they're shorts. And, um, oh yeah, this is it, but this is not the, the source video. Oh, now I gotta find it. By the way, make sure to go watch the, the Bacon Sweats. Uh, shout out to Sunspot Gallery for this video series. It's basically a compilation of, like, highlights or huge begging segments. And there's literally, like, Three hours worth of those uh, in the last two days. So go check them out. Uh, and write a comment and tell them that I sent you on something. I don't know what people do, but do that. Uh, I want to find that. I want to find that short now. <laughs> Trolls defeated. We can fucking stick it to them in the AM. God damn. <laughs> uh, defeated. Let's see defeated. What the fuck? Oh, here it is. Trolls defeated. False copyright claims removed from DSP Gaming. What's up, everyone? I've got some really positive news. <laughs> Look at the bulging eyes. It's insane. Um, yeah. That's so positive. I wanted to do a short about it so you know about it right away. After weeks of ongoing nonsense, all of the false copyright strikes against DSP Gaming have been removed. It took a while, but we got it done. This is a huge win for those of us who stand up for the law and will not put stand up, up for the law. To take down people with false copyright strikes. I am going to have the full story about what happened, including the videos in question and how they got claimed and how they got cleared up on tomorrow's episode of the Level 1 podcast at 10.45 a.m. Pacific time right here on DSP Gaming. You are not going to want to miss it. It's probably going to be one of the most watched episodes of the podcast ever. Yo, look at this. Lost. This is a big win for us. <laughs> This dude was legitimately, he was legitimately 40 years old, dude. 40 years old. And it says, trolls have lost. We won. And I can't wait to stick it to him in the AM. I'm going to stick it to him in the AM. And then somebody fucks with him in real life. Because this is what usually happens. He gets super smug like this. He thinks that he's running an army or something. And then somebody fucks with him in real life. And then he's completely powerless. And we're crying on stream making emergency videos. I want to miss. How many emergency videos have been made since this one video? Since this one? The trolls defeated. I bet it's at least two or three. See, it's probably gonna be- So this happened September 9th, 2022. Since then we had um, emergency sickness. We had emergency Comcast, which was somebody fucking with them. Uh, we had, I think, multiple emergency Comcast videos. I don't even fucking know. One of the most watched- But yes, um, to summarize this, the trolls actually won. 
and this was just um just a single battle episodes of the podcast ever it's gonna be one of the most ep watched episodes why because we're gonna talk about drama because people don't watch it when you talk about video games and what you had for dinner sounds good to me because apparently it's totally okay for people to take my content off of my channel oh now now we're back talking about uh evil aj react to it on theirs create their own content that then can be popular and give them views and monetization and popularity on the internet that's okay but if I try to do exactly the same thing that they've been doing for a decade, I shouldn't be allowed to do it just because I'm Dark Side Phil. No, no, no. It's not really about that. I'm sure Evil AJ was fucking with him just because he wanted to be petty and he wanted to make him squeal. And he literally did. So basically, he did achieve what he set out to do. So when I tried to react to this, this is how you don't play. Because, like, you guys got to understand, he will never win against the trolls. There's no state in which he has achieved total Burnell victory. It just doesn't exist, because he's lost a long, long time ago. Metal Gear Solid 2 last year, two years ago, two years ago now, uh, Evil AJ tried to take it off the internet. It's like, it's interesting, because he's like, kind of like the Sisyphus story. Uh, how do you even spell that? Yes, just like that. Like the, the dude that pushes the rock up the hill and then it rolls back down and he starts over again. But he doesn't push the rock. It's not him that pushes it. It's his fucking fans that do, because his back hurt. So he's just standing around, and his fans are pushing the rock, and then he, he spends all the money, so the rock goes all the way back down. And it's like, oh, you guys, we, we got another problem, man. We got to start over again. It's pretty pretty meaningful lifestyle. Uh, hey, big ups uh, to AMAC for the five gifted, dude. Baller alert, baller, baller, baller alert, baller alert. Many baller alert. Gratification is a term you use in therapy or addicts, but in this case he is just shifting the blame to the viewer. I wonder why his channel is dying? He is so good. It's not him for sure. Remember no one can cancel him. Yeah. He quits when he won. And, and I understand the, the instant gratification point, and I think you can make some kind of a... Um... Well, some kind of a compromise, I guess, if you're talking about something and you get a, a super chat that's also talking about that same thing, you can riff off of that. But if it's something completely unrelated that's going to get you talking on a tangent, then it's not it's it's not uh, good enough for the moment. So you actually need to, like, work around that. And he doesn't want to work around anything. He's already decided this is how things are going to go. And your suggestions are just kind of like superficial they don't really mean anything yeah he literally tried to hide the video yeah that was like, funny oh, as I hell to do that well, wait a minute hold on <clears throat> it's either it's good for everyone or it's good for no one if you're allowed to do it then i'm allowed to do it too no no wait wait what happened with the permissions though because dsp when when he first started reacting to stuff he made it a very big deal to pretend like he was the only guy on the internet who genuinely asked for permission from everybody and then he just started doing the DSP React show, and he asked nobody for anything. Like, he's just watching tens upon dozens and hundreds of videos with no permission. Even though he himself made, him, made himself the permission guy. Because if you ask me, you don't need permission to watch somebody's video on, on YouTube. But for him, apparently you do. You can get to be an asshole and hide your content because you're a scumbag to me. Which is the truth is that the guy's a scumbag to me, right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, he's your troll. He doesn't like you. What do you want him to be nice to you? I, I no. think it's pretty clear Evil AJ doesn't like you, so he doesn't want to do things that help you. Oh, I guess. Someone else had already archived it and sent it to me, and I reacted to it anyway. He couldn't hide it, and there was nothing he could do about it. Okay? Okay, Plus, so, clear? well, so it, it kind of sounds like it didn't bother you then. What are you talking about it as if it did? Curious about the situation was months earlier he had outright given permission on his Twitter account for me to react to it, and then he tried to rescind it later. It doesn't. But I, I thought you don't need permission because that's your videos, right? The guy stole your content or something, but now it's his content. I, he can't even get his shit straight. Like that. So anyway, that was the one I ever did, and then after that I was like, do I really want to get into this whole problem now? With reacting to content and people saying that they don't want me to do it and arguing and everything. No, that's not really the problem. The problem is that he doesn't feel confident enough that he's going to be able to uh, to debunk everybody. 
Like, imagine he watches a video from somebody that obviously... Imagine he watches a, a an Atlas video. And, and the dude, like, goes into a criticism. And DSP, I think if he's going to watch a video like this on stream, he will a thousand percent be confident enough that he's going to destroy that guy. That he's going to body him. So he can say, oh, look at how fucking stupid my trolls are. I just debunked him in, like, 30 seconds. But he can't do that to most people. Um, unless they're, like, outright lying or making up some fabricated conspiracy theory stuff that don't have any basis in reality. Legally, do I have a right to do it? But I think, I think at some point, he will get the confidence, or I guess you could say he's going to be delusional enough to be willing to do that stuff and be like, oh my god, I'm going to destroy another detractor. Look at how fucking stupid they are. They said I spent all this money on all of this. You got no proof. And it's not true, and it's bullshit. There you go. Yes. Do I want to fight with every motherfucker out there who's just a little brat, who thinks they can do whatever they want, and I'm not allowed to do the same thing? No, I, actually, I can do much more than Phil. But uh, also, at the same time, Phil is restricted to the amount of things he can do, but also he makes over 100k a year. So that's the price he got to pay for not having freedom on the internet. No, I don't want to be arguing with every little brat on the internet. So... That's why I basically stopped doing it. I was like, you know, I did the one. I actually had a good time. Because, you know, if, if this dude worked in a fucking, I don't know, in a warehouse somewhere, stocking shelves or picking orders, he could go on the internet and do literally whatever he wants. He could call anybody whatever he wants. He can react to anything, anytime. He can do whatever. But no, he decided to be a businessman making online content. So when you're doing that, you can't say whatever you want. You can't do whatever you want. And, well... That fucking sucks, I guess. Sucks for him. But I really don't want to waste my time arguing with children. Because that's literally what they are. They're adult children. They're like babies inside of adult bodies. Really? Just idiots with the way that they act. Okay. Oh, this guy, by the way, he can't do his own laundry and he can't cook for himself. And he doesn't He doesn't use real dishes because you got to wash them. So he uses paper plates. Uh, also, like, you know, the things that children do. Okay, so here you go. Now, as for the Turkey Tom documentary, again, this is something where if I'm going to react to something, I want to be sure that at the very least, the person on the other end is not malicious in their intention, okay? And they're not trying to purposefully create an endless cycle of drama for personal benefit. Hey, big ups, uh, Andrew, for 25 months, dude. Okay. I was actually strongly... You know what's crazy? When when this dude is talking about people inventing drama for personal benefit, he personally benefits the most when there's drama surrounding him. Literally. When he's playing fucking Elden Ring and the tips are like 50 bucks a stream or whatever. And compare that shit to when there's huge drama happening because something in his house broke or somebody fucked with him and the hundreds that he gets when this shit happens. So out of all the people that benefit the most personally when there's drama surrounding him and there's drama involved, he is one of them that that benefits the most. Considering doing an interview with Turkey Tom after his documentary about I think uh, genuinely, I think uh, Turkey Tom would be bad to conduct this interview. He would not be a good fit because he has a very like fundamental knowledge of DSP. And it would be, I'm not saying it's going to be a, a quartering style. But it's going to be um, mediocre style. Uh, big ups Johnny Five for the gifted membership, dude. Congrats to Soarta for getting Until I did a little bit of research and I found out some of the really disgusting things that he had said on the internet about people, including me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I You're just disgusting. Can't to milk this person or I'm milking them more for content. <laughs> Man, I love it when they comment. I wish that they would just react to my documentary so I could get more. I could milk them further. And it's like. What? But I mean, it's like, that's just this is the kind of shit I don't understand. I very much, um, I'm, I'm very much respect people when they just outright come, come out and say, I'm doing videos on this guy because it's fun and it gets views. Instead of having this like virtue signaling fake niceness to it, like I'm doing videos on this guy because it's constructive criticism and I hope that they improve. Just fucking say you don't like him and you want to make fun of him. That's fucking fine. It's perfectly all right. You don't have to pretend like you're a nice person. So I like it when uh, Turkey Tom comes out and be like, yeah, I'm going to fucking milk DSP because he responds to my videos and he cries about them. And that's entertaining for people to watch. You're milking a human. So fucking vile.
to say something like that and just casually too like oh it's just a casual statement i would make on the internet it's fine and no one will call me out for it it's just okay we're milking people left and right you know it's what you're literally publicly admitting to using people in a toxic and negative way for personal gain yeah that is and also the public's gain because they get entertained from it are we forgetting about that vile it's vile because DSP used uh, Pro Jared's suffering. He made fun of Ninja many times. He made fun of other people many times. And in the Pro Jared case, what makes it um, specifically particularly pathetic is that he used Pro Jared's literal, like, the, the breakdown of his YouTube career to get himself over, to elevate himself. He made a whole video about, look at how much of an amazing person I am. After this guy had one of the worst moments of his life. It's probably, I don't know, it's probably a top five moment. It's completely immoral. Why would I then want to give you more attention, right? Uh, you are doing it. So that's when I said, nah, forget it. Even though people said his documentary on me was kind of down the middle. It wasn't, oh, I think. Okay, he still hasn't seen it, by the way. Or, or at least pretends he doesn't see it. So he, he doesn't have an opinion of it. Even though he has an opinion and it's negative. But I like this guy. It was like down the middle kind of fair. Although he was harsh in certain parts, which I expect. And I Oh, he also got him. He tried to get himself over when uh, Gutex was getting in some shit. And when Twitch wanted to remove the the emote, the Pog champ, he's, he tweeted at them and posted his fucking disgusting stroked mouth face. Uh, like with the gaping mouth. And he was like, hey, man, you should you guys should replace this with um, uh, what was it? With a pog champ because it's really gonna piss that guy off. This this is the type of shit he does, man. He just injects him and stuff. Expect that from every documentary. Like with the the la the latest thing he did. This was like a couple of weeks ago. Is um uh this guy Review Tech USA's boyfriend, ex boyfriend, ex editor guy, that guy, Canadian Review Tech USA basically, Review Tech Canada, that guy. Um, one of his dudes reached out to Phil for a fucking stream. And then Phil replied, uh, yeah, we can, we can do the stream, but let's not talk about Rich. It's really going to piss him off. About me with the mistakes that I've made over this the This is what kind of a right? bitch he is. He's like a little schoolgirl in the fucking bathrooms, like gossiping about other schoolgirls. But he can't embrace that he's like that and just say, well, fuck it. It's fun for me to do. It's entertaining to my fucking audience. Fuck that shit. I'm going to keep doing it. He likes to pretend like he's everything but that. Um, but basically, yeah, uh... After that, I was like, wow, it opened my eyes to it. And I'm like, no, I don't think I'm going to be reacting to anything unless I'm absolutely sure that someone is trying to cover something neutrally or fairly. And so that's why I'm considering later this year reacting to the June the King documentary because I know he attacks things from a neutral perspective. Okay. At the end of the day, even, then even June the King might hate my guts for the stuff I've done over the years. And you know what? What's fair is fair. He has the right to have his own opinions. But at least I know from the perspective he's going to try well, Wait, 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 wait. Now, hating his guts is all right, because that's just your opinion. But he hates the internet hating his guts because it's invalid and it's a meme. I don't understand that logic, because like two days ago, he was talking about everybody hating him. They don't even hate him. It's invalid hate. It's not real hate. And now June the King, yeah, man, you can hate me, but you read a bunch of Kiwi Farms, so you're obviously objective. Mm, yeah, okay. Cover it. Because, you know, where do you think June the King gets his info from? He was reading Kiwi Farms and watching a bunch of detractor documentaries. Hmm, very interesting. Neutrally and fairly. I'm curious. And also, if it's neutral and it's fair, why does he want to skip over the segments talking about the big relevant drama that's happened to him? You know, lying on his bankruptcy, WWE champions, all that other shit with the bank leaks. Why are we going to ignore that? But we're going to react to footage of him losing money on a uh, street fighter from 20 years ago so what kind of information he even dug up on the internet from stuff like the street fighter days because nothing exists like you don't you don't even need to look into this in detail you just look at the general way that he's approaching every single situation and it tells you that he's hiding something or he's lying about something or he is trying to mislead you hey big ups uh, johnny five for the membership in lunar guardian for 27 months dude like, no, it's just, like, forum posts from forums that are dead. IRC discussions that were never archived. 
So I don't have no clue what he's gonna find about stuff, you know. And I think I think that's gonna. Okay, be there we go. And we're already we're already discrediting that whole first part because it's gonna be uh, a different person. Effectively, it's a documentary about a Phil that doesn't exist anymore. So he's not that. That's why he's so optimistic and so enthusiastic re reacting to it because he doesn't see himself as that person. He sees old Phil, and old Phil has been dead and buried a long time ago. And I don't think June the King's intention is to continuously... They shoved old Phil down the garbage disposal. Milk. Dark side Phil for six to eight months. You know what I'm saying? He's going to put out the documentary. He's interested in doing an interview with me after, depending on how my react goes to his documentary. Um, and then after that, we move on. Wait, 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 wait. What, what does that even mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a replay. He's going to put out the documentary. He's interested in doing an interview with me after, depending on how my react goes to his documentary. Depending on how my react goes to his documentary? So if you, if you like the documentary and you think that it makes you look good, you're going to make an interview with him for the exposure and for the clout. But if you don't like the things that are in the documentary and you don't like what people say about it, you're not going to do it. That sounds like a guy who has nothing to hide, right? Sounds like an honest guy that's never done anything wrong. Or the times where he did something wrong, it was a moment of weakness 25 years ago. Very interesting here. Very interesting approach, Mr. Burnell. Very interesting. Uh, big ups, tears for tea for the children membership, dude. Um, and then after that, we move on. You know, you know, so. I actually think I actually think um, that interview might happen. There's a higher chance of it happening than not happening. Oh, I guess we'll see. Because the takeaway, don't forget, there's going to be, um, I guess, let's say at least a 30 minute segment or maybe 45 ish segment about the detractors. So the overarching narrative in this documentary is going to be, yeah, Phil is a fallible human and a piece of shit, and he still is, and he's toxic as fuck, but man, those detractors are so fucking obsessed, and they're such idiots. So as long as, as DSP is under the impression that that's what the conclusion of the documentary is going to be for your average viewer, he might do the interview. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's see. But he's only going to do it if it's as safe as humanly possible. It's got to be the safest thing ever. And also, like, how are you going to do an interview with a guy who did a documentary about you that is, like, five hours long, and you're not going to talk about any of the parts that people want you to talk about? Hmm. Interesting. How is that even going to go? Ah, so OP Boone... And, and how is that how is that going to make June the King look? Because he's going to look like a clown to me if he agrees to do, yeah, we're going to do an interview with Phil, but we're not going to ask about the relevant stuff that everybody wants to know about. Uh, we're just going to talk about uh, what kind of arcades he played back in 1997. It says, in, in regards to you doing some private Patreon private React videos that had copyright issues, I'm thinking about the Patreon copyright situation. I think the best way to move forward is to treat reacting to copyright material like riff tracks. Uh, I've been thinking that uh, you're brain damaged for even thinking about this. Do you think the plum dog is never happening? Uh, I, I do. I don't think it's happening. I don't think it's happening. Especially if Plum continues to, to like go and make documentaries on pathetic, like actual worthless lol cows like EDP, people like that. Mm, it's not happening. Because Phil wanted to see himself like in good company. He wanted to be like, the second project of the hypest documentarian ever. And now the hypest documentarian ever is doing a documentary on fucking EDP. Only your webcam and microphone. Yeah, this is fucking stupid because the way he does his private reacts um, is he records it, then uploads it to YouTube, which is where he is an idiot because you can just avoid uploading it to YouTube if you just link it to somebody on some file sharing service and then you send them the link and you fuck off. You can you can literally use Google Drive for this. It's free. When you react to copyrighted materials, you get like 15 gigabytes for free. Music videos, audio and video for your capture device are muted and hidden. Give a three, two, one play count. Yeah, we don't fucking care. This is overdoing a very, very easy solution. Um, and then we get exploring alternatives for paper. Oh yeah, this is it. Harold Halibut. I do not care. 
Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, let's talk about this. Or not. Oh, yes. Or yes. Do I think that having trolls might be a positive thing? Yes. I don't even have to read the rest of your comment because... There... <laughs> no, we, we're not even going to finish reading the comment. We're just going to read it out of context. There's these, these very weird people on the internet that are like troll sympathizers or troll apologists. What? And they have this... That's called being a troll. Very bizarre fucking theory. Why? That having trolls is a good thing. It gives yeah, you it is. Chance. Yeah, it, it literally is, though. It literally is. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what people say. I can wholeheartedly tell you this right now. No. Yes. Having attention in general is not a good thing. Yes, it is. It literally is. Nowadays, any kind of attention is a good thing. Literally any kind of attention. Any. I'm not saying that you should commit crimes for attention, but people have committed crimes for attention and benefited greatly off of it. So yes, especially with social media. And if you don't take advantage of that, somebody else will. Just in, in the same case of Dark Side fucking Phil. Uh, somebody else going to clown on him and get a bunch of views off of him. Somebody else going to fucking make memes about him and get a bunch of likes on Twitter. Yes, it definitely works and it definitely has helped him greatly. He just doesn't want to admit it. Positive attention in life. You don't want attention by any means necessary, even though they're- Because why, why do you think Keemstar wanted DSP on the LolCow podcast? Of course, for DSP to be DSP and to be put in that weird situation that is outside of his comfort zone and he would need to like figure it out. But at the same time, he wanted all the DSP trolls to talk about the LolCow podcast and to clip it and to go in and watch the live streams and to restream it and all that shit because it's going to get- the, the hype up is going to get the word out. And it's because fucking Keemstar understands it. There are some content creators out there that think that, oh, the only way I can get attention is negative, so I'll just do... Also, no. This is, uh, of course, this is very misleading what he said. The only way you can get attention. No, it's a way you can get attention. And nowadays with the algorithm, it doesn't matter if it's positive, negative. The algorithm doesn't even fucking know. It just knows attention. It just knows traffic. That's all it cares about. Drama shit. It's stupid. I'll give you some examples. If okay, I please. Have a bunch of trolls stalking me at every movement. I could actually have some sponsors. Uh, but you said you don't want sponsors. Not that you can't get them. You don't want them because you're a, you're an honest and ethical guy, and you're not gonna sell out for a shitty sponsorship. But now it's like, the opposite. Now I I wish I could have sponsors. I just got too many trolls, man. I could actually have some products that I believe in that I could actually have on this stream that would actually, you know, either pay me or have like those referral programs. And I would have additional income that would allow me to do things like take more days off a week and spend more time. Yeah, with that's family. just like, no, come on. Or maybe go this, uh, you might start believing in this if you're listening to it um, in a vacuum. But the moment you learn something about Dark Side Phil's hypocrisy and his flip flopping, specifically on this issue, you know that this right here means nothing. Go on a honeymoon. And I can't do those things. And now he's talking about going on a honeymoon. Bro, you could have done that like years ago if you stopped spending money on mobile games. Like, come on. Everybody knows this. He could have bought himself uh, a new dishwasher if he stopped spending money this week. This week, he already spent more on champions than he would if he bought a dishwasher. For his wife not to be behind on doing the dishes and stressed out. She was stre so stressed out, she couldn't even play video games. That's what we're talking about. Because I have a toxic cloud following me around that no matter how I behave, they say I'm the devil. So if I were to... But why are, why are they so believable? If I get a sponsorship, I would lose it because they would harass the sponsor and the sponsor would leave. That's something that people without a troll base don't have. Literally, there are people way smaller than me that have sponsorships. Um. Yeah, but it's also because... It's because they have better traffic and they have better engagement and they have better stats overall. Because you don't just get a sponsorship. I mean, well, you, you can. But you don't just get people to sponsor you by streaming in front of like five people. People who get, you know, 
hundred people on a stream, people with tiny Twitter followings, people with channels with like 20,000 subscribers have sponsorships. Yes, but they get much better engagement than you do, bro. Nobody gives a fuck that you got 210,000. Actually, that's a really bad thing because the first impression it makes when I click on this channel and I see, wow, it's DSP Gaming with a check mark and he got 210K. And then I see the first fucking video got 71 views for four hours. And then this makes me think, oh, this is this must be one of those washed up has-beens that is still trying to make this their job, even though it's the train has long passed and they're just uh, denying to embrace reality. And, and there's many channels like this, uh, but except most people don't try and grasp onto this until the, fi the final moment and until they realize there's no coming back like this guy. Most of them, they're just like, well, I, I used to be somebody on YouTube. I guess I'll still put out some videos every once in a while. So, yeah, Phil. That I can't get because of my troll base. You understand? Again, I'll say this. Out of the 99%, uh, the 99% of people who watch me. Okay? Excuse me. Let me say that again. Out of all the people that watch me or know of me. 99% of them hate me. Oh, that's something that I've said before. Uh, but I use that as a point against him, not for him. I don't understand where he's going with this point. Let's hear him out. 1% of the people who know of me give me a shot and realize I'm not the devil and actually like, wait a minute. A lot of the stuff that they say about Phil is completely false. It's just done for the narrative of making content and monitoring. But okay, where, where is the percentage of people who didn't believe the trolls? Then they gave him a God, God's honest shot, and they realized that he's as bad as the trolls say. Uh, where is that percentage? How many people are those? Right? But almost no one gives me a shot. So No, they, many people give him a shot. Like, unironically, people genuinely, especially those that, uh, that have the detractors make a bad first impression of him, uh, where they, they start thinking about, okay, this guy. Because I, I remember I was, I was feeling like that the first time I discovered this guy. I was like, damn. There's a bunch of people like clipping in, posting a bunch of shit. I don't think any of this is like interesting. And then I, I gave him an honest shot and it fucking blew my mind. Right now, if I didn't. Oh, by the way, he has a typo on his leaderboard. You can see it says one Mintu man. I have a toxic troll base, even though I might be a small time YouTuber, I would still. How many small time YouTubers make hundred grand a year? Be able to do things like collabs. Imagine if I could... No, he can't do collabs just because of his own personality and nobody wanting to do anything with him. It's not because of his trolls. Actually show up on someone's podcast talking about gaming. You got nothing to say about gaming that's interesting or original. Nobody wants to hear you talk about gaming. Instead of... Because nobody listens to your fucking gaming takes because you just steal them off of fucking Twitter. ...of controversies around me. Imagine if the side scrollers wanted to interview me, but it was because they had a hot topic of something going on in gaming and they wanted me to be part of a panel to contribute. Well, you have nothing to contribute and also you don't really offer much to the show because you don't have a viewer base that they can uh, tap into. Instead of like you're actually nobody, bro. You're actually nobody. Take away the drama and DSP is just a, a nobody channel. Let's just talk about all the nasty controversial things your detractors say for five hours. Um, that's what you wanted to do, right? Right? You agreed to do that, right? You agreed to all the questions, right? You agreed to Keemstar being there, correct? But no. I think he did, you guys. Uh, big ups, come back, Josh, for 25 months, dude. Oh, that's Congratulations. the I have to live because I have... That's the... <laughs> this is a great sound clip. I wanted me to be part of a panel to contribute. Instead of, let's just talk about all the nasty, controversial things your detractors say for five hours. But no, that's the life I have to live because I have trolls. <laughs> and also, man, what are the nasty, controversial things that you play a mobile game that you admit to playing? Correct. So that's not really nasty. That's not slander. Matter of fact, it's factually true. Uh, what else? That you went bankrupt? Yes, it's a very important thing in your history. And you lied about it and you concealed several things. And you never defended yourself outside of saying that that's not true. What's the next thing? The bank leaks. Uh, you just straight up say they're not true. Even there's, wow, the evidence against you is terrible. So what do we do? Like, what, what do we do? All this slanderous stuff, you got no defense. You just, your defense is getting angry. 
So whenever that happens, somebody looks very guilty in this situation. I don't really know, man. And even like take apart, take away the five thousand dollars business expenses. Let's say that his, because I don't know how any of those paperwork bullshit works. Let's say that it's his uh, bankruptcy lawyer Rochelle, that that bitch. Now uh, let's say that she wrote the number based on some vague estimate, because everything with DSP is a vague estimate. Uh, something breaks in his house. The vague estimate is a thousand dollars, or maybe uh, fifteen hundred, if you guys feel more generous. So let's say those 5k, he doesn't know anything about it. But it's like, you can't, you can't answer where your money goes in general when you get a, like an overwhelming amount of money for most people considering what you spend it on, which seems to be um, food and bills. So can we expand on that? If I no. didn't have trolls, things would be a lot better for me and my family. Okay? There is zero justification for the things they've said or done. Nothing that they have done has swayed towards the positive side versus the negative i would be much better off if the trolls never existed i would be prominent on youtube no that's that's never happening i never would have had a this is how you don't play movement that would have been so toxic i wouldn't have gotten swatted my yeah but but that wouldn't mean that things would go in a positive direction naturally because what would happen which is the the most obvious thing is those people that actually care about putting an entertaining show together they would just make their own YouTube channels doing the same shit that he does, and they would steal his viewers, and he would still be the same dinosaur he is nowadays. So one way or another, he would he's just bound to fail. There is no there is no universe in which he was successful because inevitably competition comes and it's over. And have had millions of views deleted and taking out of the YouTube algorithm. Like there's a zillion things that trolls have done that are exponentially worse than the few trickled people in here who came in as a result of watching troll content and maybe now like me, okay? Well, that's because he failed to, well, take advantage of that. He failed to take advantage of all that publicity that he gets for free just by having people talk about him. And he chose to be irrelevant. That's a decision that he consciously made because he believes he's holier than thou. So he can't degrade himself like Wings of Redemption. Unlike any other topic, he could actually contribute to a WWE Champions pod. Think he will ever make WWE Champions content? Uh, no. I don't think he would make it, but I, had no I agree with you. Would average about eight viewers a stream, forced to move back into his parents talking how people are too lazy to watch his streams. Yeah. Well, that that's the shit that would happen, dude. And I think based on his attitude, he would inevitably get trolls. Even if it wasn't back in the day with the this is how you don't play movement, he would inevitably get somebody to clown on him on Twitter, and then that post would get like 10,000 likes or whatever, and people would keep clowning him. Even if he didn't jerk off, it's still like, he's just not, not built for a positive internet experience. It's just kind of the opposite. Uh, but going back to the previous message about the, the WWE Champions podcast, you know what? You know what? He was very open to talking about it and like going in depth into the mechanics of the game when he was playing Supercard. Because he was going on the forums, writing guides to people and how they can get a better deck and what the current meta is. So he's definitely passionate talking about this, but you know, having, having to keep it a secret and having to make it something that he can ever, never talk about, uh, you know. This is probably not going to happen. Listen, I, I'll just, I'll take it as it is. There's nothing I can really do about it, right? <clears throat> but essentially, I know for a fact the trolls have fucked with my life endlessly and continue to do so, by the way. Just because I don't actively talk about it all the time doesn't you mean should. that they're not actively trying to fuck me over in ways you would never even believe if I told you. Okay? But you should. You should tell us. So then you could get a couple more views on your channel so you can get some fucking money or something instead of everybody else monetizing you you fucking idiot okay they're fucked up obsessed weirdos i bet some of them are and it's messed up the extent that they go for absolutely nothing for um, nothing so basically yeah no you're completely wrong insane but didn't he, hold on did he also say a couple of days ago that nobody can fuck with him and he's like untouchable at first, he what? didn't want sponsorships cause he's not a shill and is better than every other YouTuber, but now he just can't get them cause of the trolls. It's it's one of those, depending on the narrative. 
it's one of those. If he begs for money, he wants to present himself as the most genuine guy to have ever existed. So he's going to pull out the whole, I don't want to use sponsorships because I'm super honest, unlike everybody else. And if he wants to push the other narrative that he's a victim and he's a martyr and he's uh, led a, a life of suffering, then it's like, I can't get them. Even though he's admitted multiple times, he can get a sponsorship for a mobile game any day of the week. Basically. Except he can't. It's like, not even... Except he can, though. But he doesn't want to. You know, it's it's complicated. Wrong. You're insanely wrong. You're like, one of the most incorrect statements to be made on this planet would be, oh, isn't it probably a good thing you have trolls? No. Absolutely fucking not. It's insane that he convinced himself that he would be successful if it wasn't for the trolls. He just doesn't have it in him. It just doesn't. If I didn't have trolls, I... He is too creatively bankrupt to do anything interesting nowadays. And I'm talking about the current landscape. I'm not talking about 2012 YouTube that was completely fucking nothing. They're talking about nowadays you got everybody trying to figure out the algorithm. You got everybody trying to come out with a new gimmick that's going to hit, that's going to both be optimal for engagement and also for entertainment in everybody's ADHD and their attention span. He's not capable of doing that. He is not technically proficient in literally anything. And I'm talking about video games as well. He is not a good gamer. He's not good at editing videos. He's not good at making graphic designs, thumbnails, animations, videos, anything. He is not good at making vlogs. Uh, he is not good at uh, going outside and doing like IRL stuff or making vlogs of traveling or whatever. He's not creative in the way of uh, music, in the way of art etc. You're just not good at anything. So if he had no trolls, there would be a million percent less attention on him and he would be much worse than he is nowadays. It could literally be double the profitability that I have right now seen in a positive light. No. Seen as someone no. who could be part of a, an online internet community and not hated on constantly. No. Right? <clears throat> There's so none, none of this would have ever happened. None of this. Things that would be better for me if I didn't have trolls. Nope. That didn't mean uh, that doesn't mean you would have fans though. You would just not have trolls. There you go. Uh, well, okay, you can choose to live in that reality. That's your choice. Okay. So there you have it. That's where we are as of now. Um, we have a little bit of extra time. If anyone wants to, because uh, like you cannot understate the amount of of engagement that is driven to him purely by the trolls. Purely by stuff like Pig Pig Go and the restreams and fucking uh, clips channels. If those didn't exist, the natural hype that is that is built up around him would not exist. Would have never existed. So he would just fade away and vanish. Uh, and also that would mean that he would be nowhere near as interesting to make fun of. Because, well, if, if he doesn't have trolls, then he doesn't do anything interesting to have trolls. Uh, talk. What's funny is people in chat are saying, Do, are you aware that your troll subreddit has been shut down? No, I don't even know anything about it. I've never been to to, to my troll subreddit. I know nothing of it. I, I don't even know what you're talking about, like how long it's been, if it's prominent, how long it's been running. I don't know, and I don't care. I, I have nothing to do with that. I, that's what I mean. I literally don't pay attention to that content, so I don't know anything about it. <clears throat> hip, hip, hooray, if it's gone, I guess. I don't know how it's affected me in any way because I've never been <laughs> Well, they posted a, a photo of your gated community's gate, by the way. Um, but okay. What would you guys actually like to talk about? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, trolls would always naturally just happen to him because they naturally happen. It's not some astroturfed trolling to, to like profit off of him because he's there's much bigger fish to fry. Oh, man, on a daily basis, on a daily basis. And all you got to do is just open up Twitter and see whoever is in what kind of drama any given day. Not popular is cause of the trolls. It has nothing to do with his boring, unfunny personality or his horrible, boring content. Well, it, it's it's fascinating that that he thinks that things could have gone differently just if you subtract the trolls. It would be it would be different. Yeah, but not in the way he thinks. Uh, so next, next he's talking about the Fallout show, and I am not interested. So I'm just not going to do it. But apparently there is a new suggestion box thing or something. I, I don't even know. 
Um, so, oh no, this is from a month ago. Oh, this is the Ann Lead post. Yes. Then we get, oh my god, there's just so much shit. And most of them are OP Boon stuff. Uh, even with suggestions you disagree with, you shouldn't be mean to people for making a suggestion. But what if those people are fucking idiots and assholes and morons? Huh? I don't know. What if that happened? And now we're show consider using the multiple playlists option. Like, bro, he can't even find his own videos. What are we talking about? What are we actually talking about? This shit is crazy. Um, what are we going to do now? Let's go watch some clips. So this is this is a, a DSP business segment. I guess we can just call them like that, DSP business, and see what this is going on. What's going on here? Yeah. What happened yesterday on the React stuff? Um. So basically, because this is from yesterday, I believe. Yes, the fifteenth. Uh, correct. Fifteen. On the DSP versus the Internet show, which is my weekly clips React show over on my DSP Reacts channel. A uh, good variety of topics. Like, I would say this week was such a good mix because we had gameplay trailers, but we had also videos about things going on in the game industry. Uh, we had uh, documentaries. We had stuff about, like, world news. We had all kinds of good stuff, you know? And I really enjoy when we have the biggest amount of variety on the show because it makes it feel like, truly, we're kind of jumping around and experiencing a variety of things about life together. Um... <clears throat> and it's always a good time and uh it's always a chill time i really don't have any complaints it was a pretty much dead on exactly how i like that show um and depending on the videos that are submitted some weeks we get through many 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 oh videos my god this shirt know. is so bad get it out of here we actually did every video we actually watched every single one and then last week we didn't do many videos at all like we just went through the ultra submissions and then when we got, got to the, like, the, the submission tier, which is everything in a random playlist, we only got through a few. And I was like, wow. Some of those videos were so good, we kept watching, 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 and <laughs> didn't get through too many. Yesterday was more of kind of a mix, I would say. Um, where we, we got through, I think, about half of the submission tier videos. Oh my god. Okay, I'm, I'm skipping through this. I had some patience. I was hoping that this would get interesting. He would start, like, crying about views or something, but it's just him. About stuff. You know what explaining I mean? bullshit. Like, Hold on. Content. And I kept resisting. Okay, so here is when he talks about something that makes him salty. Basically, that stuff was really, really good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually had a great time with it, but... Oh, there we go. It didn't really catch on. Hey, there we go. Like, when I was doing that React stuff... What React stuff, though? I want to get the context for this shit. The show. So, it's working. You know, the formula is working. And <clears throat> the one thing I'm struggling with on the DXP Reacts channel is content outside of the show. You know, my idea originally for the React channel was that I was going to do long-form React events. And I did. I was doing long-form React events. Remember last year? We reacted to one or two of the June the King documentaries. I reacted to the Internet Historian YouTube channel. And then I did a whole giant summertime event about Machinima and my time with them. And oh my like that. god, that shit. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was so bad. That was so miserable. So... Because it's like, he's talking about a company that hasn't been relevant in like a long time. In his experience, that are even res less relevant than the fucking company. And he acted like it was the most important thing ever. Because he had bad things to say about him. That's that's why. He had bad experiences with him. And he wanted to shit on him after they died. Basically, that stuff was really, really good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually had a great time with it. But it didn't really catch on. Like, when I was doing that React stuff, people were actually complaining that I should have not done it and instead spent more time on gaming. In reality, some of those streams actually did poorly, which is weird because for years and years, people just kept telling me they wanted me to do React content. Yeah, and what did they? What did you tell them? What did you tell them for years and years? Oh, that's like the lowest form of fucking idiot bullshit content ever. Okay, go watch those fucking idiots that do it. Leave me alone. I'm not doing it. And then years after that, oh, you guys come back. I'm doing it now. It's awesome. It's so much fun. And I kept resisting, resisting, saying... He I kept resisting, by the way. didn't think that it had value, and it wasn't... And that, yeah, that's what he said. He didn't think it has value. He called it, like, the most worthless, boring, lazy content ever. It really and now we're just rephrasing everything. The people that were talking to him, they were harassing him. They were yelling at him. And he politely and calmly responded, I don't believe... 
uh, this kind of content brings enough value to my channel, sir. Something that was going to fit. And then finally, when I started doing it, oh. I love it. Like, I love it every time he describes a situation where he interacted with somebody because it feels like an anime. Because everything is, like, turned up to the max. It's, like, the most over-exaggerated uh, communication moment anybody has ever had. Because they yell at him, they scream at him, they're harassing him, they're being pushy, and he's being, like, the nicest, calmest guy ever. He's, well, well, actually, it's not that good. No shit. <laughs> it's like, no shit. The, the only way React content works, okay, is if you're a, a, a big drama queen, and you basically, oh, like you. Of, you know crap on stuff or you want to cause some kind of controversy about stuff you know dog no wait dude all uh, his fucking long form react videos are for the most part him watching some drama about somebody else or about himself because he did like two he probably did like six hours in total watching a wing wings of redemption documentary and talking about basically how much better than wings he is and then he did that same shit for his own videos, for his own, like, videos about him. You know what I mean? Like, goddamn, dude. All his fucking long-form long reacts was just drama baiting. Like, for me, you see what I do on the react show every week. You know, I give my honest opinions on things, and some people agree and some people disagree. But I'm not watching videos for the sake of trying to sensationalize or cause drama. I'm not overreacting to things like a lot of content creators tend yeah, to. Yeah, he's underreacting, though. That's why they take him down for copyright, because he's not transformative enough. Do? So right now, I would say my biggest struggle in all of my content is trying to make the React channel relevant. The one thing that's relevant is the weekly show, DSP versus the internet, but outside... It, now, that That's not relevant. That is not relevant. I, I don't have regular content for it. You know, last year, <clears throat> I tried putting out regular reviews, and... Essentially, I didn't feel like it was worth the effort when I was putting out reviews. It was worth the effort. What, what, what is the effort that goes into those videos? What is the effort? Watching a movie for two hours and then sitting in front of the camera for 20 minutes talking about what happened in the movie? Not even reviewing the movie. You just explain what happens in the movie. And that's even not worth the effort. Wow, that's some respect for your viewership. Some respect for your channel. Very nice. Each and no one really talked about him and they weren't really in demand. Nobody talked about him. He wants people to have to have in-depth conversations about his reviews of movies from like 15 years ago or from 2016. Like I can see myself doing seasonal reviews for like Halloween month. I'll probably do horror movies and Christmas month I'll probably Like how how important does he think he is to like people? To the point where he's taking himself so incredibly seriously. He believes like everybody's life revolves around him related stuff but outside of that i don't see the point of like doing random reviews because i tried them and they didn't really catch on at all um i think the fallout tv show is an exception this is a, a game series that i have played all of the major releases in for the last 15 years people like those playthroughs you're probably gonna like my opinion on the show yeah you should release your video like five weeks from now so it's relevant because everybody released their reviews already because the the whole uh, the whole season came out at once so the people that want it actually had genuine interest in reviewing it they did it when the the episodes first dropped and now he's he's late already and then he's gonna get like 2,000 views and say it's like the best video he's ever made dsp reacts let's see this because of course and then we got a bunch of washed up videos i'm not watching that mass effect fallout thumb test and wow th these are fucking terrible and of course the review is not here because he hasn't made it yet because it, it, it probably takes too much effort right but outside of that like me just ran uh you know reviewing a random show or a random uh movie sadly it just didn't seem like many people gave a crap um yeah, maybe you should review relevant stuff. For the amount of effort to, to schedule myself watching the movie and then figuring out a night when I have like an extra hour to two hours to film and upload and all that. Oh, he's going to post it on Wednesday night? Well, good. He should wait until next week. It's going to be even hotter then. It, it's it's a, it's an endeavor. And... But then what is he going to cry about? Is he going to cry about the algorithm? Because let's see. There, there's like a billion reviews out already. So Fallout uh, TV show review. And now let's see who got it. So the critical drinker had it. 
Of course, it almost uh, got like 830,000. Then we get, well, I guess this is perhaps a review as well. Then we got Mr. Maddie Plays got a review as well. Pyro Cynical got a review. Angry Joe, of course, Angry Joe has a review. Of course he does. Uh, then we get a Fallout 76 review. Is really good right now, apparently. Then we got, of course, Sir Moist got a review with like a 1.1 million. Then we got another dude. Yeah, DSP is not breaking through this. It's not happening. It's just not happening. Because he got nothing interesting to say. His video too low effort. And he's just stupid. And he's also DSP. And that's also, that. that's the last thing you should say when you're, like, when you're uh, talking about DSP's quality. Is that he's, well, this is DSP. And, you know, it, it just looked to me like doing more of what you want. Like more gameplay, more chill streams seems to benefit overall everyone than me just sitting around doing reviews and trying to cram them in you know what oh I'm yes so well, what it's I mean? a it's a really big shock that the things that take the lowest amount of effort are the best and he wants to do them wow like right now the react channel is the channel that's suffering the most i don't do regular food vlogs every once in a while i do one and i post it up over there the tier maker stuff i like doing but it seems like people can't ex can't really agree on what would be the good tier makers for me to do. Um, I did a few of them last year. Some of them worked really well and some of them not so much. But if anyone has ideas for tier makers that you'd like to see me do on like a late night stream one night, just a random tier maker ranking and we chill and we do it together, I'd be down for that. But outside of that, I'm just not sure what else you guys want on that channel. You know what I mean? Like right now the channel, it's self-sufficient because of the memberships. I don't make ad revenue on the channel because all the videos. Oh, and of course, of show. course. But of the memberships course. keep it afloat. If that channel were to dwindle in memberships, sadly, it wouldn't be worth doing anymore. So I'm happy that I, I do have the level of support that I got over there. But, you know, I, I don't know what else to put on that channel to get people interested. Uh, <laughs> I'm all ears. And again. When it comes to that, so please let me know. Oh, my God. This whole segment is just like complaining about how things are not working out. And saying that he's trying his best, but then it's like, well, I don't know what to do. Just, just like, tell me what to do, and then, then I'll do it, and you'll give me money for it. And we're just going to keep going until we die. And uh, let's try to figure that out, all right? Yeah, that's how it always ends. Let's, okay, you guys, think about it. Let's uh, get back to me with uh, the ideas you got, okay? I'm going to take a sip. Now, the throwback channel... Oh, no, I'm not listening to anything about the throwback channel. I want to forget that shit even exists because it's so fucking stupid. Every kind, uh, every time he talks about it, it's stupid. Without exception. Every time it sucks. Uh, here we got, he is too mature and too married for Stellar Blade. I, I've heard this one before. I am, um, I, I cannot do that. I cannot. Uh, here we got a weird big. Is it that? Oh, this, this is the one I wanted to think about. Uh, I wanted to talk about it, actually. So this is about why he can't get a job effectively. And she's gone through different jobs and looked for better jobs. And okay, now we're going to talk about Cat. 100% that this exists because over the years that Cat has been in Washington and she's gone through different jobs and looked for better jobs and stuff. There's been times when, you know, she's applying for different jobs, going to interviews and stuff. And I can tell you a few years ago, there was a situation. There's actually two situations that happened. Here's the first. So she's looking for positions that, you know, she would be qualified for, interested in. And she sees a job posting at a local Best Buy store. Okay? Online. So she applies for it. Okay, interview. Come in for the interview at a certain day. She goes to the store for the interview. First of all, no one can even find the manager who's responsible for interview. Oh, no. Why? Like, bro, we're talking about Best Buy. Let's not hold them in, in like, super high regard. Because, it's like, people that work in places like this, and I've worked in, in multiple places like this, they're pretty much unqualified or not educated enough. So let's not, let's not act like she's going to go work in a, uh, in a big fucking company. These stores don't have... So let's, let's not expect anything too crazy from Best Buy. Hiring manager. They just have managers that are expected to perform interviews who yeah. are paying for it. Yeah, what, what is the interview for Best Buy going to be? Hey, why, why do you want to work here? Oh, because you need a job? Because you need money? Because the economy is shit and you just want to get a job? Well, okay, welcome aboard. Let's go stock some shelves. 
Yeah, that's and I've been to interviews like this too. Like what what do you think they're going to ask you for? You're not educated, you're not qualified for like a a bigger position. Yeah, let's go stock some shelves. Somebody going to do that. I've done that plenty of times. Nothing wrong with it. So they can't even find the guy who's supposed to be doing the interview, but you told me to come to the store at this time okay. for an interview. How is the person who's supposed to be interviewing me not here or ready for it? Oh it my god. Sense. So she, she, she expects the red carpet. She sits around for a very long time, <clears throat> upwards of an hour. Finally, this manager appears who's going to interview her. She gets into the end. Upward, okay, this, I'm not buying this shit. The upwards of an hour. Yeah, she, she, she was there for an hour waiting for a guy to be found in the store. Sure. Interview. And the first question, all right, that's asked is... So what job did you apply for? Yeah. What? You yeah, it's not like, oh my god. Uh, for the interviewing manager, you're supposed to be- Yeah, it's fucking Best Buy. It's the same way they would treat you if you went to McDonald's and wanted to get a job. Interviewing me for the position. And, and it's like, they feel insulted. Like, Kat, you are not qualified for better treatment than that. And I'm, I'm saying this because I've been in that position. I haven't been qualified for shit. So I would- me and my, my roommate in university, the first year we went there, uh, we just printed out a bunch of, like, CVs, and we started going around the city center to, like, restaurants to see if they needed somebody to wash fucking dishes. They didn't treat us like the, the red carpet and showing up in a suit and, like, uh, calling me sir. No, because I wasn't qualified for that. I wasn't on that level, and Kat isn't on that level either. You're asking me what job I applied for? What am I doing here? So she tells, I, I applied for this position. Oh, I don't have any jobs in that position open. Well, okay, another position then. If you really need that job, you're going to take it. What the, what? This is not a made-up story. This literally happened to my wife. And she's like, why? I don't understand. I It was on the site. I applied for it. Well, I don't know about that, but I, we don't have that job. If you want, you could you could maybe uh, apply for this job, and I can interview for that now. And she's like, "No, why would I do that?" Um, cause cause you need the job, right? You need the money, right? Do you, you do you want to have a job, or you don't want to have a job? Why? What are you talking about? What so are you talking about? Was... You know, you know that beggars can't be choosers. Well, I I. I'm not sure he knows it because he's a beggar and he's been choosing since the day he was born. But, I mean... A complete waste of her time. She went home completely deflated, thinking that she was going to get a job interview for a job she wanted, and that's how she got treated. Yeah, I don't think Kat ended up being deflated. I'm, I'm just not trusting that. That's the American job market. Like, no exaggeration. There was another job she applied for. It was supposed to be for a position. I believe, it, I want to say it was like at a hotel. And it was supposed to be like... Oh, this one is great. Now, this this story is great. Like, front desk. So she applies for this hotel position at the front desk. She goes into for the interview, and they say, So just so you know, that's actually not really the job. Okay? The job is, you're going to be driving a hotel shuttle back and forth from the airport. Imagine, imagine that, dude. Cat driving a shuttle. Maybe that would even give her, like, a nice little helmet. Like a driving helmet. <laughs> what? The job? Uh, you would give her a nice uniform, dude. She would look so cool. I applied for was front desk. Well, that's really not it. You will be driving a shuttle. Why am I here? It didn't make any sense. And the the, the way that the the interviewer kind of pushed it was well, bro. The, the thing is that they're just gonna end up hiring somebody else. There you go. They're just gonna hire somebody else who actually needs the job. Well, who doesn't feel like it's below them, beneath them, to, to drive a shuttle yeah. whenever that's necessary so you can get paid for it? Yeah, 90% of the time you'll be driving the shuttle, but you may be at the front desk at some points if there's no one to drive around. Texas here. So many fast food and retail is so understaffed and the managers keep getting stacked with more responsibility cause corporate is cold-blooded. My client is insanely busy and underpaid and no one wants to work manager was busy doing a lot well yeah it's like that i mean if if you really need a job you can probably have a pretty easy time finding one it's not gonna be a good job but you know like it in in their case it's like they just need some job apparently right out 
So, but but you're going to be driving the shuttle. But literally, the online fucking posting was for front desk. So this is how these employers in the U.S. are now treating jobs. They basically don't care about the employees. All they care about is getting a a, a, a big well of information from people. What? Right? And then they just they lie to get your information, and then they try to basically fool you into a job. Like for example, what, what do they what do they do with the information? And they try and fool you into a job that you agree to after they explain to you what the job is? You're desperate for a job, right? Oh, man. Oh, man. If he had a co-host that wasn't, of course, a complete dent head, he would, he would just sit quietly all the time, man. He wouldn't be... He wouldn't dare saying anything because he would get clapped back into oblivion every time. It would, it would humiliate him. Right? And so you applied at the hotel for front desk. You get into... The, the interview and they say it's to, for the shuttle well i'm desperate for a job i might as well take it yes well yeah if you're desperate for a job you might as well take anything but you didn't want that job what if you're not even good at fucking driving <laughs> right well if now you, you take the job or the best oh, buy job my god for example i believe what it was she was applying for like you know someone working on the floor maybe an electronics and they said well no you're going to be a cell phone specialist and only sell cell phones well, she doesn't have interest in that. She doesn't know about cell phones that much. She's well, she's going to fucking learn about it. She's going to learn about it. Do you think they teach you everything about fucking hamburgers when you start working at McDonald's? And with pride, too. Yeah, Subaru, man. He, sh he would have, like, a Subaru shuttle. It would uh, it would have super loud bass inside. Epic. The ultra-rare European-style time stream. It's 6.30 in the morning for me. Going to my job. Thank yeah. God it isn't one of these ones. Hello, boyfriend. Yeah, get your ass out there and fucking work, bitch. Milk those humans. You're milking a human. Keep milking them. Never stop. They go. Care for that? Why would you want to work that job? And by the way, isn't it funny? If the job posting is for one job, but you go in, but the actual opening's for another, why is that? Phil went through bankruptcy. Because they're idiots? Phil didn't get a job. LMAO Phil is never getting a real job. Oh, he, he isn't. He isn't. No, it's not happening. He now he's venting about his wife not being able to get it. It's not happening, dude. Yet doesn't realize he makes her sound useless. Again, true yep. family bread earner style husband. Uh, the same the same way he made her look when um when the tire not the tire the car broke down or something so Cat couldn't go to work so she just didn't go to work. She didn't take a an Uber or a bus because as he says, uh, they talked about it and they. Uh, they got to the conclusion that, uh, what was it? That the bus is going to be late, so she's going to be late to work. So she decided not to go at all. And then like a week after, or even maybe uh, during that same segment, he was talking about how she doesn't get enough shifts and enough hours to begin with. It's like, wow, I wonder why. I wonder why. When you would rather stay at home than be late for work, you're not very reliable. And in jobs like this, they just they just want you to show up, basically. Just show up and do whatever you got to do and don't cause any problems. You're going to be fine. Probably because no one wants that job for good reason. And what's funny is now there's websites you can go to online that talk about certain job positions, people who've had them. And after they leave the position, they go online to talk about that job and what it entails. And you'll see people with horror stories. Yeah. So they say it's a cell phone job, but man, it's high pressure. You got to sell cell phones. If you don't, you get yelled at. It's commission based. So you don't get a lot of money unless you are constantly selling. They literally tell you to attach things to every sale. And if you don't, um, basically you get in trouble for it or you get make like no money. So essentially you just lie to the customer and tell the customer they need. Okay. Th so just, okay. Okay. Just, just don't get a job then just, just stay unemployed then. Some all the jobs are predatory. All the companies are terrible. Everybody lies. Everybody makes you do all this stuff. So just stay jobless. That's the moral of the story. Thing that they don't need so that they'll, you'll make a sale, attack on sale. So basically it's junk jobs, right? It's junk jobs where it's just mistreat people. Junk lie to jobs. People, just make sales. Who wants those, right? No one. That's why. Um, they lie. People that need them. You don't. I, I don't know why his understanding of having a job is doing something that you enjoy. Of course, it's always great if that happens to you, but sometimes by the time that happens to you, you need to work a lot of jobs you don't enjoy just to build yourself up to a level where you can work something you enjoy. 
I need to get you in. And Cat is definitely in that bracket of people that need to, to work something that they don't like because they don't have much choice. In the door for another position, and then they tell you the other job is the one available. And DSP is borderline, like, he is just unemployable. He can't do anything. He can stock shelves because his back hurts. He can move pallets because his back hurts. He can drive a fucking forklift because his back hurts. And he can't uh, do anything that's phone-based because he's insufferable and he sucks. This is what's going on right now in America. And, of course, the biggest uh, deal breaker is that he just doesn't want to work anything that he believes that is under his level. Makes his wife look like a total idiot who can't even do the most basic tasks and can't handle the most basic jobs. Yeah, always, always. It, it shocks me. It shocks me how he doesn't even realize he's making her look really stupid and really bad. America, another thing that he mentioned, a lot of the jobs, they look attractive. You apply, you just never hear back. Nothing. Because they're not actually real. They're jobs that maybe once a year they'll need someone new. So they'll, oh, I have fucking all this information from all these years that I've accumulated. And then when I, it's convenient for me, now I'll draw upon it. And I'll give you another example of that. Again, a few years ago, Kat applying around for jobs and stuff. She gets a phone call. I'm not shitting you. Nine months later, from when she applied for a job, are you interested in it? What are you talking about? I applied nine months ago. Do you think I sat around and didn't work for nine months? No, I, I got another job. Of course, I'm not interested in it anymore, stupid. But this is what they do. They, they're they posting up. Because I love I love that he's like personally offended that they did that. Of course, they're going to do that. Sure. Here's how it used to be. Because sometimes they're going to land on somebody that still needs a job. It used to be to apply for a job. Oh, and now we're talking about what? The 1960s? Well, how it used to be. You would apply for a job and then they would call you and you would show up and the secretary would give you a hand job under the table during the interview. Oh, the good old days. And you can smoke in the airplanes too. You had to physically go to the place. You had to meet with the, with the people who worked there. You would take a physical application. You would fill it out. You would put it there physically. That's work, right? You can still do that. You can literally still do that. I've done that in person. Like I just told you, we used to go around in restaurants giving us the, giving the, the literal physical CV. Being like, sure, if you need somebody to fucking wash dishes and pay me like five euros per hour hit me up call me I'll, I'll be here for you and they did and it was terrible we both hated it he talks a lot about jobs for a guy who can't hold one down he's just like us common plebeians fr father fr father <laughs> yeah man he can't well he can uh, i i don't even think he can get hired he probably can't actually he can get hired for a bunch of stuff but yeah you and for them so basically, if they said, oh, we're hiring for put application, they're not going to lie. They actually are hiring because why else would they want to have to be collecting paper applications and explaining how to fill it out and shit like that? That's work for them. So now, because everything's online and automated, there's no work for them. They can literally have these job postings up indefinitely and have your information sit in a fucking queue for two, three years and never touch it. And then when they need it, now it's convenient. Now I pull it out. And now because everything is automated... There's no hiring managers at the store anymore responsible. Oh, my God. Job. Instead, they try to say, oh, by the way, maybe maybe they just don't have like a thousand people showing up to to ask for a job at Best Buy. So they just got one manager who's just been vaguely taught how to have an interview because the interview for working at Best Buy is not fucking deep because I, I fucking know the level of interview it takes you. They just ask you, hey, do you have a pulse? Um, Do you have any? transmittable diseases um are you chased by the fucking law oh no okay great welcome aboard hey someone applied for the job so now you have to squeeze in an interview today what are you talking about i'm here for for 10 hours today and the 10 hours i'm here i got this to do this to do and this to do well too bad now just do the interview too and by the way they're it takes like 20 minutes to do an interview man it's not Oh my god, it's not the side scrollers you're doing an interview with. It takes 10 minutes. Coming in at 2 p.m., be ready. Wait. I literally, I've gone fucking stoned to interviews and got the job. Come on, it's not, it's not that deep. What? So, how am I supposed to do that? Like, literally biking to the place was more difficult than, than doing the actual interview. <laughs> That's how it is in American jobs now. American, these, these retail jobs, restaurant jobs, hotel chains, they're all like that. They're just... There's no professionalism anymore. It's just uh -huh. treat it like everyone gets fucked around and jerked around, including the employees there. Can you imagine how the how the manager feels? 
I have to do my normal managerial duties for the day. Oh, by the way, I also have to be a hiring manager today too, even though I have no training. No, it's just it's it's just a manager. It's not a, a hiring manager. That's America, folks. That's when when you when you imagine say that's America, folks. Sales jobs while in the past putting a fight stick up from Bonnie's up charge and I believe sometimes auctioning them simply because his snossage fingers and Rambo's fingerprints are on them. They could buy a normal pad. Mm, I don't know. I don't know about auctioning them because uh, I'm pretty sure people would have found it very easily. Because, well, you know, if something is like, is is having a DSP sign it or have his DNA on it, it's going to be worth millions. So, of course, it's going to be a pretty big deal. The news, and the news says, oh, all these jobs were created this month. No, they weren't. The news is lying. <laughs> this is an epic DSP politics segment. Because he's saying, like, literally nothing. It's all just platitudes and nonsense. Like, oh, the government... They're just a bunch of fucking idiots, and they're lying. These jobs either don't exist or these flaky fuck jobs that no one wants. That's what they're reporting is the new jobs that are being created in our economy. It's bunk. Nobody wants those jobs. Our country is not any better off than it was just a few years oh, ago. Oh, man, this dude is so privileged. Somebody should take him down a peg. God it's damn it. Bullshit. It's misreporting for political spin. It's really nonsensical that people put this shit uh, to put up with it, but... <clears throat> And it's crazy that this dude who talks about paying his bills 24-7 doesn't understand that some people need to pay their bills so they take those jobs that quote-unquote nobody wants because somebody gonna do them. Anyway, um, all right, that's enough of that. Good, good post that's actually timely to some stuff that I've seen per from personal experience. Let's continue. I got the drip. This is like incredible, incredible level of of DSPism in this one. So let's see what is going to be a little bit different and spicy because some of these segments are recurring segments. Let's call them like that. It's segments that happen every once in a while, like the fucking... Uh, it's so now the whole overarching narrative that is being built up this year up to the lead up well as a lead to the June the King documentary is that it's uh, the trolls fault for disliking him and they actually don't dislike him. They're just faking it. They're just lying about it so they can get views and I well I guess it's working so he can go fuck himself and there's nothing he can do about it by the way. That's also what is a part of the narrative. And what he wants you to do is give him a fair shake and watch all his videos and basically his entire life story. So once you you go through everything, you're going to find out that he's actually nothing like what the trolls say he is. Except sometimes. Sometimes he is. But that's not most of the time. That's sometimes. Just sometimes. Except it's, you know, it's very complicated. Very complicated. Uh, what did, what did I want to fucking watch? I forgot. Or are we going to end the stream? I still have some more time. Uh, I think it was... Let's give some shoutouts from the subscription box. I already told you guys, go check out the Sunspot Gallery Bacon Sweats, of course. Uh, because if you don't, I'm going to be super pissed off, dude. And I'll call you slurs. Uh, then we got, he could have sponsors if he wanted to. That's, uh, we just saw that. The suggestion box gimmick. Uh, the job market gimmick. God damn it. This whole thing with the, the Turkey Tom and Evil AJ gimmick. It's all gimmicks here. It's all crazy shit. <laughs> uh, did, did I? Uh, yeah, I did talk about Cat no-showing the, um, the co-op stream. And I mean, what, what can you say about that? Um... <laughs> Well, I, I think I talked about it on TBS, not on my stream, but I don't really have much to say. So basically, long story short, what happened with uh, these individuals is that Cat has been working a lot recently. Then Phil, uh, what Phil did is he asked her to do a co-op with him and they couldn't settle on a day. But then uh, what happened is one day she was super stressed out. You know, the day she was supposed to do the co-op. She was super stressed out. And 
uh, she was behind on her chores because, of course, everybody in that house has their own stuff to do. Hers is to be the maid and his is to complain about stuff and never be satisfied with anything. So then she had to do the laundry and she had to do a bunch of cleaning up. Uh, he didn't really help her with it, so she couldn't, she didn't have to be as stressed. Uh, but what he did is he went and fucked with the laundry and couldn't fix it really. So what he did was um, just drop it and laugh it off. And Kat was still, <laughs> Kat was still, um, yeah, she was still stressed out and she still didn't show up to the stream. So a very nice husband moment here from Mr. Burnell. Again, proving why he's a fantastic caretaker and provider for the family. Oh, shit. And this is it. I'm, I'm not going to watch this whole thing because this is most of this is quote unquote context and quote unquote telling a story. But it's it's really not. It's not actually worth paying attention to, I guess, if, if you were to say that. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, what is this video about? So this one is uh, from Atomic Toy Robot, and it's called Special Events, DSP versus Others. So let's talk about a special events. Because at some point, they did actually kind of feel special. Uh, I mean, to uh, for DSP standards. Because nowadays, uh, from probably like a year ago until now, I, I'm, I'm struggling to find when the first instance of this happening was. But he realized that on those quote-unquote special events, he is guaranteed to make a certain amount of money without even trying. So he's just not even trying. Like, there was four of them. So we got Thanksgiving, we got Christmas, we got his birthday, and we got Halloween. And on those four events, he just doesn't give a fuck. He just doesn't do anything. It's like, he actually does less than usual. Because he already feels entitled to the money, so why even bother making it feel special? But before that, he was doing some, like, clowning it up and trying for it to make it feel special, but at some point, he realized there was no point. So let's see what this video is about. More detractor content after that Dragon Ball Z, only on Toonami. You know, I love doing these special events. They're cool, chill opportunities to just have a good time. And being that it's my birthday, it would be nice to hang out with people. If, you've, if I haven't even seen you in a while, it'd be nice to at least see you come by and say hello. Right. It's time for another good idea, bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah, and this the, the, ate, Dr. Oink. Oh my god, this the, the whole bootleg idea of how he's just gonna do it with the, the paper plate and just sitting there is just pathetic. I don't know. There's nothing fun about it. There's nothing that, that tells you that you should be relaxed and chilling and hanging out is just nasty and uncomfortable. And at the best best case is just boring. That's the best case. Yeah, see the brownie is tasty. Mm. Good idea. Is somebody banging on the... That's me, the air mark. Oh, these, uh, these dudes. I don't know how they're called, but... I was just outside the plane. Everything's fine out there. So they're playing Flight Simulator, and they got, like, a, an actual unironic, like, cockpit set up, and they're dressed up like pilots. This actual fun stuff from people that seem to care about this. What? Uh, air marshal, what's your name? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, they got an actual cockpit set up. That's sweet. Do you have a name, or... Air Marshal... Air Marshal Kraken. Air Marshal Kraken. All right. Oh, you get me. You get me. Look, this is life or death, man. Oh, yo, this is an actual cockpit. Oh, it's an actual cockpit. Like, look at this. They have a camera mounted on it and everything. Feels alcohol everywhere. <laughs> wow, this is lit. Oh, that's a bad way to. But of course, they're the they're the big streamers. They're the big streamers. They probably had a team of people helping him assemble the cockpit. DSP couldn't even lift this cockpit. How is he going to assemble it? Come on. It's unrealistic expectations. And then who else we got? Yeah, this is literally just a cockpit. And look, everybody, it's, uh, they set up their screens and everything. Bad idea. What do we got here? Oh, my God. 
Yeah. And look, this is when he was vaguely trying. Look, there was some sort of, um, you know, some some sort of decorations behind him, something looking a little bit different. This year, we got none of that. We're just like, you're going to show up and I'll read a bunch of game re uh, release dates and then I'm going to eat some cake and you will give me money for it because it's my special day. As long as it's got a good chocolate flavor, I'm going to be happy. Okay. It's true and honest lobotomized content. It smells chocolatey. It smells sweet as well. Okay. Good idea. Hey! Hey, how are you? Do this quickly. Let me park this thing. Yeah, I don't know this dude, but he's, uh, is he making like a, is, is this supposed to be like a theme park gimmick? Oh, that's Jerma, dude. Oh, yeah. This guy, by the way, this guy is very close to being like the opposite of DSP. Because the stuff that he regularly does is n nothing like too complicated, nothing really like too crazy, but he, his personality is so strong. That he's become kind of a meme on the internet because people like him. Like it's 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 crazy. It's, it's just the opposite effect of DSP. You'd like some? Son, you over there? Why don't you come on over here, son? I am gonna make you a special treat. I have trained in this, son. Is this your He's gonna make cotton candy, huh? Daniel? Daniel, good to see you. So I have trained in the art. Of making cotton candy. <laughs> it's like a bug zapper. <laughs> All right. Like well, epic. Now that's what I call a special stream. Imagine you. Imagine you. Got okay, now this is not. I'd be like. <laughs> this cotton candy is not it, but I appreciate the effort. I'll let you, I won't move. It'll hit me right in the face. Oh, so this is, uh, wow, this is, okay, this is crazy. So his chat gets to command this, uh, a contraption, whatever this is. I don't know what this is. I guess it shoots something. Directly in the face. Um, yeah, let's see what they're going to do. Huh. Can't do it. You want to, you want to make that joke so bad. And after you actually did it. Hey, there we go. They even headshot him with the, the, whatever the fuck that is. It's. Too complicated. I'm a DSP viewer. I don't get it. Oh yeah, make sure to go check out this video because it's a fun video. It's a good comparison. I didn't know Jerma did this kind of stuff. Uh, but of course, he's a massive YouTuber. It's not fair. It's not fair. We should compare Phil with the other small YouTubers, which also doesn't make him look good because all the other small YouTubers are like unironically years ahead of him. Okay, let's let's do a little bit of an experiment. Let's look up DSP gaming and see what is um the latest game that he's played so it's okay alone in the dark let's see alone in the dark 2024 um let's play okay and let's find somebody who is a contemporary well not a contemporary but some some competition of dsp somebody that gets around the same amount of views and see if they do something better or not so this guy obviously not him because this guy gets uh and i know him he makes some some funny videos uh yeah he's way ahead of him then we got the rad brad who seemingly rad brad is seemingly did a playthrough of every single game that's ever been made and it's always the first thing that you see when you click on it so first we got to get through people that um actually have people watching them then this one is too small for comparing it to dsp i guess what is this ben gun or this guy i guess this guy much better than or much bigger than Phil, or at least around, what are the oldest ones, or from 12 years ago, well, he's been, I guess, okay, let's let's try compare this guy, I think it's kind of fair, because looking at the views uh, of the latest, here we got a bunch of them with uh, like 500, 600, yeah, kind of looking like DSP views, so let's see his um, Alone in the Dark, and see what's up about it, first of all, you can see it's the whole playthrough. 
So I guess that's why he got more views than normally he would have because it's one playthrough, the, the entire thing, divided into chapters, which is also a very good idea for somebody like DSP to adopt because then you upload one video that is all of this stuff. I know it doesn't fit in fucking dark side filled Jeremy bullshit, but... Kakak, there was a video about a guy that travels and makes videos on it and he said he doesn't have many subs but a ton of views so he has to be rich outside of YouTube or he of course. make these videos. Yeah, of course. A sponsor is humanly impossible. It's impossible, it's immoral, and um, you shouldn't exist if you do it. Unless you're DSP, then you should exist and you should be very successful. Oh yeah, so this is a walkthrough. So here we're not going to get any kind of, I guess, uh, commentary. So yeah, fuck this. Let's move on to somebody else. So this is a gameplay walkthrough, which I guess, well, it has a guy in it. Streamed three weeks ago. So this guy finished the game three weeks before Dark Side Phil. Okay, so this is a channel that is, I guess, relatively of DSP's size and stature. This guy got half a million subscribers. And uh, the views are not looking good. So this is clearly a channel that's fallen off and a channel that has existed for over 16 years. So I guess it's a good comparison. So let's take a look at what this guy does that Mr. Bernelski doesn't do. Here we got the chapters. We got the whole stream published, by the way. And we got the chapters, so I can just skip through this. Um, clearly, we have a, a person with a green screen, which I always like when you're doing gameplay that you do the green screen thing because it gives you more flexibility you can put them all all over the page and it's just easier uh it's not that big of a difference yeah, and for dsp is yeah. is not gonna make that big of a difference anyways but still yes. it's just the the more contemporary thing you can do yes i did never mind <laughs> and then i guess it's just the dude playing the game sis Sabotage. Please do not touch the boiler. It is work. Boy, would I find you there, Juan? Dr. Gray's office is locked. There's tons of shit. So we're going to go upstairs. Yeah, this guy's stuff is uh, it's pretty much better put together than DSP. At least he got some like basic layout going on and basic like stuff that are easy to do. And you do them if you're like a, a YouTuber. You just got to do it. Uh, I, I like the chapters. I like the whole whole thing being in one video. And yeah, there you go. I don't... Uh, he doesn't come across as toxic too. So, well, interesting. Uh, and then we got this guy from 30 years ago. But this guy is different. He makes different kind of content. As you can probably tell from his thumbnail. Or maybe maybe it's just misleading. Let's see this dude. He So he got almost... Uh... Yeah, this guy is much bigger than DSP. It's not fair comparing him to him. Uh, what else do we have? I guess, did I just go through all of the, the gameplay that was relevant? I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, that guy also didn't have a leaderboard and stuff like that. But I don't mind people having a leaderboard. It's, it's good for people's names to be like up there. They send money and stuff. It's cool. I don't mind many of the things that DSP does like in practice. Alrighty, everybody. So, okay, let's look at this. I think his camera is way too big. Uh, and the background is bad, so he could just crop himself out with some green screen. Easy shit. He doesn't even need the green screen, just a, a filter in OBS. Uh, I don't mind the leaderboard. It's put in a place where it's not annoying or intrusive or anything. That's fine. Uh, I don't mind him, like, splitting the parts and having YouTube... Uh, you know, unrecorded segments because if that's the way he decides to upload his stuff, fine. I don't think it's efficient, but there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. Um, then I don't even mind him having certain calls to action when it comes to um, when it comes to like contributions. If he wants to start off the episode by saying, hey, you know, you can fucking drop a like if you like it and fucking send me a tip if you want to support the channel. But his shit is just so shady and so scummy that it just makes it in the worst way possible. And of course, it's way too often compared to everybody else. Uh, I don't know what is happening here. Why he stopped playing the game. Oh, because he ended it. Okay, so he ended it and then had a big Q&A or post, post segment. Because as you can see, he's sitting on literal $5. So of course, we need to fill up some time with... Um, 
Yeah, I was skipping this shit. Adjourn, but I want to say, I want to tell you guys, since obviously you didn't see it, I want to tell you about the other two endings, okay? Now, first of all, I don't know who, after having played both sides, what I can say is we saw more of the full picture. We got to see how Carnby basically had a dark side to him being a detective. And that he had these inner guilts that were haunting. Oh my god. Really driving her. They must have fixed the problem. But as you can see, there is mold over the course. Of were Carnby and Emily actually ever in these alternate game? Now, throw away what if weird ending. But the other two endings are dependent on you getting all of the Lani apps. They're both kind of dark though. All right. The secret ending for Carnby. I would still say. End of the game. I would still say his biggest problem is the general pacing. Because you can't retain people when you're, like, getting up and going to the bathroom for, like, five minutes. And in the meantime, nothing is playing. You can't retain people by having a two-hour podcast where you just talk about what you're about to do and uh, talk about yourself. You just can't. And the few people that stick around, they're just getting bored. And he doesn't let them talk about anything in chat after all. So there's so many things that are wrong with him that it, it's unfixable. It's irredeemable. It's not happening. And I don't know. It's just a, a, a conversation that there's not much to say about anymore. He decides to side with the cultists. And he says, I'm going to be a part of this ritual. And basically he turns on Emily. And he's been indoctrinated into the cult. And I think... It's like Emily does escape, and that's the ending of the game, but it's a very dark ending. Because obviously one of the protagonists, the one you're playing as, goes evil at the end of the game, okay? The other secret ending is for Emily, and in her secret ending, what ends up happening is at the end of the game... Oh my god, I'm gonna get to the secret ending of this stream. Where is the Q&A that he posted? Or, 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 or this is it. This is it. We're just like, legit just talking about the ending and right. waiting for somebody to give him game. money it down shoot the weak point she's in the trenches not a 10 personally i think it's around an eight it's definitely an not eight out of ten horror, but it's also not i mean class or whatever i had a great time with it so i hope that you all did too okay <clears throat> but this is gonna be it i'm not gonna do the alternate endings because what i would have to actually go through the game get to the mausoleum again find this one collectible yeah okay bro oh my god because like i had some vague interest in waiting to see if something interesting is going to happen and this he, he just kept going so this is interesting uh or at least not really interesting but it's something that happened hello everyone this happened when cat didn't show up uh for the co-op stream so he just did a live ps5 controller unboxing yes he bought a ps5 controller because, like, I've never heard of a, a person who broke as many controllers as DSP. I've never broken a single controller myself because I take care of the shit, so I don't have to spend money on more of the shit. But with Phil, it's like, it's a given. Because he's a real gamer. It seems like once a month... He's gaming, like, 24-7. Just go a little bit awry or plans change. And so, here we are, April 13th, 2024. It's about a month since... Also, what the fuck is with his audio? What is with his audio? I have my volume maxed out on the player. And also I have fucking a YouTube enhancer that is boosting him. The last time. And this motherfucker is still quiet as fuck. And tonight we are doing an impromptu chill stream with a live audience. We're just going to hang out with each other, have a good time, talk, have some conversation. And I actually have a new PS5 controller being delivered tonight. Uh, needed it right away because... One controller has a thumbstick drift, and the other one has a melted thumbstick. <laughs> I was just telling the audience about this. Um, so I needed a new one. So that's arriving, and when it arrives, I can do a live unboxing. It's actually a, a, a special color, because the audience earlier today on my Elden Ring stream voted for this special color. Uh, so we can do that together. It's just going to be relaxing and talking and having a good time tonight. Nothing crazy, nothing super serious. No real... No when when has it been super serious? When he almost lost his house? Well, I I guess, yeah. It's a hangout session. We, like I said... Nothing crazy or super month, serious. In February but I, I thought this is a chill gameplay stream. What are we talking about super serious? March it's March. never supposed to be super serious. And they usually do well. Usually people want to talk and hang out and people engage and they end up supporting and it ends up a good time. Uh -huh. So let's see how tonight goes. 
First of all, let's just address the So Oh no, hold on. Yeah, but uh, first uh, you noticed why he wants to do this because it's easy to do, it's chill and sometimes people like it and give him money for it. But let's address the elephant in the room. And they end up supporting and it ends. <laughs> well, let's see how tonight goes. I wonder who we're going to be talking about. First of all, let's just address the elephant in the room. Originally, tonight was supposed to be co-op with my wife, Kat. We were gonna... <laughs> Is she the elephant in the room? Beyond two souls. <laughs> all right. What happened? Hell. It seems like this playthrough, we came up with the idea for this playthrough about a month ago. All right. And it just seems like it's like destined to have problems. Seriously. Like, we just can't get this thing going. First, we wanted to do it. But I was stuck in the midst of playing so many lengthy RPGs and trying to push to finish them. It didn't make sense to start it then because I needed to finish those RPGs. Oh, and now we just default to talking about RPGs. Oh, Jesus Christ. Variety back on the channel. So I did that, right? Like I, I pushed hard. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to, and we got them all done. Then originally we were going to do it like two weeks ago on a Tuesday night and Basically, it didn't go, you know, my, my wife wasn't up to it that week. She changed her mind. It was basically like, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not feeling it. Too much else going on. All right. I get it. Delay it. So I get so it. We'll do it the next week. We were gung ho 100% locked in schedule to do it this last Tuesday, which would have been what? Um, the 9th, right? April 9th. We were 100%. Whatever. No, we, had every, we have all the stuff we need. We have two of these headsets now. What? Why? Oh, yeah. Somebody bought her a headset. They actually cucked him. You having other men on the internet buying his wife stuff. Each of us can. It's crazy. One. It's actually crazy. When we do it, we bought all these wire. We bought a splitter wire. We bought extra. Head like an actual cuck. Oh my god. Cables for it and everything. How are you gonna let this happen? Other people will be bu buying gifts for your wife. You know, we got a chair for. We're ready. <laughs> we're raring to go. They I got a chair. On sale last. Oh week. man, I can't wait for this to happen. Both of them with their toilet seats. And cat with some innovative original makeup that nobody's ever worn before. It's gonna be incredible. Come on, I got it for like twelve bucks on PSN. It's installed. It's like we are a hundred percent good to go. What ends up happening is, uh, my wife's work basically changed her schedule on her. Unbeknownst to her, they didn't even tell her. She just happened to be checking the schedule online, and it's like the whole schedule's different. She's like, wait, what? I've had the same schedule set for a while. Why would they do this and not even talk to me about it? Right? Well, because it's a shitty level one job. That kind of stuff happens. It's happened to me a lot. So, yeah. It's just how it works. If you don't want this to happen, go get a degree in something. Right? So. And then it's still probably going to happen. It threw our whole week into it for a loop. Remember? Like, I don't, I don't believe. Like, this is how detached from reality, uh, from reality these two are where they believe that they can work the most level one retail job ever, and they deserve to be treated like they're executives. We were going to take Wednesday off this week, past week because April 10th is our wedding anniversary. So we were going to have that as our day off. We were going to have a longer streaming week this week. You know, we wanted to be together for our wedding anniversary, but because they changed her work schedule, that all got to get changed. So our day off ended up being the day after our wedding anniversary. And because of her work schedule changed, we couldn't do the co-op on two. They are married and they can't agree on when they are going to play games together. The marriage is a shame. They are useless. Uh, I, I just cannot... I, I cannot fathom why it needs to be so complicated for them to come down to a conclusion on when they're going to play video games together. It's so... It's such a thing that should not be that important, should not be that complicated. But somehow they managed to make them. I don't even know. I guess it's because Dark Side Phil is involved. And anytime he is involved in something, it's overcomplicated and not productive at all. But he thinks it is because it's overcomplicated. Now, originally we were thinking about maybe we'll cram it in on Wednesday night, maybe. And we were talking about that and saying, let's do it. But then we realized, you know, to cram it in on the Wednesday night when she'd been working nonstop all week. Plus that we were going to go out the entire Thursday. We would rather have a relaxing night the night before our entire busy day out. So we decided against it. We're like, nah, let's not do the co-op. I'll do a regular night stream and, you know, we'll have a day out and then we'll have it. So we talked about it. We were like, when should we do it then? And we realized, you know, it might make more sense to do it 
on a weekend because typically she doesn't have to work weekends. Not every time, because like I said, this work, her schedule could change, but typically she's not working over weekends. Oh my God, okay. Saturday nights would be perfect because number one, she won't be overly exhausted from working. But dog, why, why don't you just wait until she's not at work and just ask her, hey, you feel like playing video games tonight? If you want, we can just set up a stream. We, we don't need to have it announced like weeks before. Like it's a, the theatrical release of a movie or something. I guess in his mind, he feels like he needs to. And he needs to like make a big deal out of it. Because otherwise, people might not support. Because they don't truly care about him as much as he thinks they do. Number two, it's a night, you know, usually, typically on, on, on weekends, more people can attend. Right? People aren't in school, aren't in work. They're out and they could come by a stream a little bit more. Like, well, a lot of people want to see our stew co-op. It'd be pretty cool. We do the co-op on the weekend. We'll probably get more viewers. So we totally agreed to this. Like, yeah, this is great. This will work out, right? So then here's what happened is we had our day out on Thursday. And it was a great day. Don't get me wrong. We did a lot of fun <laughs> stuff together. And all of this, dude, all of this is a lead up to him just doing Q&A. That's it. The, the incredible... Super long story of how they didn't play video games with his wife. Uh, did some shopping, had a great dinner. We talked about it on the podcast yesterday. How good him and cat act like streaming is so difficult. SMH, uh, it could be, it could be, it could be very difficult and it could be very stressful and it could be very taxing. But what he does isn't, is just simply not. It just isn't, it is not. Period. Period. He runs, uh, he runs a very rudimentary basic setup of what a streaming setup should be he does very generic things that are pretty easy to do and very obvious to do and yeah that's that's it and that's all that is kind of expected of him so yeah what he does is very very easy now what makes it difficult now what makes it difficult is doing that shit uh legitimately six days a week because it, it's going to wear you down after a couple of weeks or maybe even after one. Because that shit is annoying to do. And that's why it's probably not recommended to do it more than, I guess, like four times a week. Depending. But for him, he should definitely have like a four-day streaming week. Because he's going to lose his shit sometime soon. Because it's like day in, day out. The, like dealing with the same dents. Dealing with the same trolls. Nah. Uh, big ups, uh, Jay Wussow for the three months, dude. And says, I hate his dollar store Sopranos wardrobe. Big ups. This is, uh, it's, uh, terrible. Like, it, it, it is Sopranos, but at the same time, it's also like, I'm getting American tourists in a foreign movie type of vibe. Where they wanted to have some kind of a, a stereotype for somebody, I guess. And then they did this. And big ups, uh, Danny the DK for the previous one where you said streaming is difficult. It was, right? Which it is, dude. Um, but basically, Brother. because of that, we were behind on stuff. Like, my wife is behind on things she would normally do, like like loads of laundry and doing certain housework and stuff like that. Certain, why don't you help out? So, <clears throat> you know, this morning... My, my wife is behind on all the stuff she got to do. You know that uh, laundry is not on top of the list of priorities, right? Oh, she got so much laundry, man. She got homework to do. We get up and we're having breakfast and we're talking about... In it. other house yeah, stuff. You know, we're still on par. We're going to do the co-op tonight. And I could already tell a little bit that maybe Kat was a little, like, frazzled about it. And you know, I didn't know why or anything. And here's the thing. If, if he could tell... I said this on TBS as well. If he could tell that she wasn't feeling good, then she must have been feeling absolutely devastated. Because this guy cannot catch a hint. He has absolutely no self-awareness to how somebody might be feeling. Well, so imagine if he noticed that, shit was probably terrible. Still set to do it. So I did my first stream, and I, as I finished my first stream, I went downstairs into the kitchen. And here's Kat hurriedly trying to finish dinner. And that's surprising. Because usually she's done with her. <laughs> early. Usually that bitch is much faster at making dinner. And that's how I knew that there was something wrong. Dinner wasn't made. And you know, when I don't get my din din, I get fucking pissed off. And she's rushing to try to finish dinner as I'm coming down. From rushing to I finish dinner. Something's wrong. And you could tell she's really stressed out. Why, why could you tell? Because dinner wasn't done? And I said, oh, what's going on? She goes, <laughs> so I'm trying to do one thing and another thing goes wrong. I try to do the next thing and the next thing goes wrong. Give up. So you should give up. It's one of those. You should become a live streamer. Beg people for money. 
Murphy's Law situations, right? As as I'm in the kitchen with my wife and she's trying to finish dinner, a noise goes off. It's our washing machine. She's trying to wash clothes. And this washing machine has errored out saying uneven load three times. So she okay, so what is the um, washing machine machine uneven load? Let's figure it out. So unevenly distributed laundry is a common cause of drum imbalance. Uh, how to fix an imbalanced washing machine. I don't know if it's a problem with the machine or you just... Yeah. Potential damage. Look at this. Oh my god. We're, we're going to get to some point where... Where the washing machine is going to be damaged, dude. And they're not going to have a dishwasher and a washing machine. And this guy's going to start showing up in, in like wife beaters. That are all the same wife beater. Because there's nobody to do the laundry. She's been trying to do a load of clothes for over an hour. And can't even finish it. Because the goddamn washer keeps saying uneven load. So I said, I'll go look at the washer. You focus on dinner. Now, this is where the story gets exceptional. Let's work together. Let's figure all this out. I don't even know what's wrong, what was wrong with the load of clothes. Honestly, I went in and it was just a bunch of towels and a few pieces of clothing. It's like, I don't know why it's saying uneven load. I have no idea. You know, I'm separating it. What are you supposed to do? You separate it out so they're not lumped together. You toss them back in fresh, even though they're soaked. You know, you got to keep doing that so that they won't keep, keep doing that, right? So... It, that's wrong he says it means the load is too heavy that's not what it means what it means is somehow what's in your washer has become loaded to like one side or clumped together to the he knows what everything means but he can't fix it and he doesn't know how and it always happens we move the clothes anymore they're stuck <laughs> but he knows better than everybody else alive how this works place so then it stops to prevent the washer from moving across your floor or causing damage to the washer so anyway um Basically, we, you know, I, I cleared it up, right? I go to start the washer again. I stupidly hit the power button. Instead of the resume button, I hit the power button. So it resets the whole goddamn thing. Now, I don't need to wash the clothes the whole full setting again. So I go to, I'm like, well, I'll wait. So I got to call the cat. Cat, I screwed everything up because I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. I screwed uh, up. What do I do? I screwed the whole she load up. The kitchen where she's trying to <laughs> dude, it's such a some meme, dude. So he tried to help out in the most bare minimum way and made everything more obnoxious and worse for everybody involved. That sounds like a DSP moment through and through. I'm over to the laundry room to show me how to use the washer because I'm an idiot, right? So it's like, why did I even help? I just made, I just complicated things even worse, right? <laughs> so finally, we, we get it going again on like a short cycle. It's like 15 minutes short cycle, so like short spin cycle or something like that, right? Go back to the kitchen. So basically trying to finish, and I could tell Kat is completely stressed out. And I said, so what's going on? And she's like, basically, the whole week has been a shit show, right? Ever since the work schedule changed earlier this week, and then she had to work more days and different times, it threw her schedule off. So here she is. She's behind on all this stuff. Okay. And she's like, I need to get clothes done today. I need to do I need to do this, this. She's like, tell me all the stuff she has to do. And she's like, I would have had it all done. And what did what did DSP say? I love this interaction because he walks up to Cat and is like, "Okay, I can see, I can see you're bummed out. What what's going on?" And she's like, "Yeah, I gotta do all this shit here, man, and I gotta do it myself." And he's like, "Oh, well, ah, uh, that that sucks, man. I'll tell the stream all about it so they can feel good for you." And then he just like turns around and waddles off. That's how I imagine it went. Like not not at one point in his mind did it come. Uh, the, the thought of him helping out come and be like, hey, you know what? I know this is your work, but I, I see you're stressed out as fuck. Let me just help you out with those dishes. Go and do this other thing and we can be done with it in an hour and everything's going to be fine. But, that but no, that didn't happen. Because dinner wasn't done. He needs to have dinner. And then two hours later, go back to the stream. Throwing me off. And then we had our day off for our anniversary. If we'd stayed home that day, I would have had more time to catch up. But we didn't. We went out. And oh, yeah. <laughs> if we had stayed home on the anniversary celebration so I can wash dishes and do laundry, I could have caught up. But sadly, we celebrated our anniversary. And yeah, it, man, it made it all difficult. Not that she regrets that. She loved having the day out. But basically, she just can't play. She's been playing catch up all week. It hasn't yet, right? Yeah, have you helped? Like, no. Well, what do you want to do? You know, and, and basically, here's what I here's my actual honest take on this. Okay? The honest take is that he didn't do shit. Why on earth 
Oh, wow. That was a nice bold spot zoom in. I want to see that. Actual honest take on this. Okay. Yeah, him. You know what? That's why I think that moment is one of the most important moments for you to realize what kind of a person he is. Him waking up Liana and admitting that she was sick and admitting that he's only waking her up so she can make him dinner told me everything I need to know about him as a person and him as a part of a relationship. It told me everything I need to know. Why on earth are we going to be doing co-op tonight if she's going to be stressed out? Right. Uh, you didn't help her not be stressed out, you moron. That's your problem. That's that your part where where you did something wrong. The whole idea of us coming in here and doing. And now we're just making this about him. He's just making my wife is stressed, so we're not gonna have this uh content, you guys. I'm sorry. Anything together on a stream is that it's supposed to be a fun atmosphere, right? We're going to have fun together. Yeah, but but my wife is bummed out, so now it's not going to be fun, so we're not doing it. We're going to play a game. We're going to talk. So it's her fault, audience. but it's actually not her fault, you guys. Right? If she's already stressed out, and now she's going to come in here and try to play a game, you know that's just going to translate into her demeanor and her enjoyment of the stream in general. And you also know, let's be honest, you also know that the trolls are going to be here. I already see some of them in chat saying dumb shit. I'm kind of... Okay, but I thought that Kat was not professional enough to read chat, so she wouldn't even see those, right? Or you just don't show her what they're talking about. Because, of course, you know they're going to be nasty. You know what they're going to be joking about, that she's fat, that her makeup is bad, that you ruined her. You know all this. So just turn the chat around, and you guys have fun, and you're going to be the only one who's going to be looking at chat now to at least give my explanation but that's the thing like what's the point of doing a late night stream with my wife where we're supposed to be having fun together if she's not going to have fun because she's stressed out it doesn't make sense well it right? doesn't so i said to her i said if you're stressed out and all you want to do tonight is play catch up or do some relaxing or whatever you want to do that's perfectly fine just tell me now and that way we're not being forced into a situation <laughs> where we're doing Oh my god. So he says, okay, if you're stressed out, just tell me to cancel the stream. You can do whatever you want. If you want to keep doing your laundry, being stressed out and keep doing laundry, it's cool. I'm fine with it. Not at one point was he like, hey, I know you're stressed out. Chillax, I'm going to help you out and you're going to feel okay. That's not going to work because, you know, we're going to be stressed out and upset. Just keep being stressed. We're not going to have the yeah, stream. I, I don't want to do it. She's like, I want to do it. I want to do it, but let's do it on a week when I'm not so stressed out because everything, she's so backed up and everything, okay? So basically, we agreed that we're going to do it next weekend. We're going to do it next Saturday night. She wants to do it badly. She wants to play this game. Yes, she's badly. Of course she was badly. She was very apologetic. She Come was like, on. I'm, I'm nervous now. Is everyone going to be upset? Said, yeah, and he made her feel like shit. He made her feel like dog shit, man. I'm sure of this. I guarantee you that this happened. Because he would talk to her and be like, hey, cat. You know that everybody's like looking forward to the co-op. We've canceled it like five times already, man. I don't know. I think they're going to be like complaining or something. And they're not really going to be happy about it. But if you're stressed out, you we don't have to do it, okay? We don't have to do it. Even though they're going to complain a lot. I said, you don't have to worry. It's like, listen, number one, all right? This is our life together. It's not dictated by what happens on one of my work streams, right? Just because we told them we're going to do co-op. It doesn't mean that's the end of, of the world, and now we're all hugely have to be committed to doing this. It's ridiculous, right? Well, that is true. That is true, but he's been selling his wife as if, like, the it's the best thing ever. The family streams, I'm supposed to believe, are, like, godlike. In addition to something that we already do. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not the end of the world. Not everyone's going to freak out, you know? It's not... That's the thing. I think she, she genuinely feels sad and worried that people aren't going to want to see the co-op now because it keeps getting rescheduled so what i basically have to say is it's this simple alert. he's doing I to her what he did to, to rambo lol uh i i can't really trace back a clip off the top of my head but i i get what you mean i get what you mean it's like this you know subtle guilt tripping or implying that you're guilt tripping somebody i i know what what that means you know to do it it's like oh man people really want us to do this and it it sucks that you can't do it, but, you know, if you if you don't feel good, then I understand you, man. But, like, it really sucks. I'm really disheartened right now. He does the same thing with his fans, too. 
when it comes to like contributions and money and everything. Oh, you guys, I had so much fun today, but you know, I, I kind of feel bad because uh, I'm really disheartened because you guys, you know, there wasn't much support. I didn't get anything out of this. And I've like really loved this game. It means so much to me playing Final Fantasy VIII Reboot XD Remake. And I don't know, man. I kind of wish like people liked it more. We'll do it. And she says, and why is he doing it? Because this shit worked for him because it was effective in the past because this shit worked on Rambo. This shit worked on the dance. It always worked. And that's why he keeps doing it. Let's do it next Saturday. And one day it's going to stop working and he's going to be like, well, dude, I didn't change. Why is, why is this not working now? I'm still the same guy and it used to work. She wanted to do it tonight, but it's just things just kept getting backed up and backed up and backed up and backed up to the point where it's like to even come on here tonight. She's going to feel so stressed. There, what's the point, right? That's exactly right, Orange. Orange says, it's okay. Tell Cash she just doesn't owe us anything. Correct, right? Like, absolutely correct. She doesn't owe anyone anything. She doesn't have to be on a stream. I agree. I, mean, we, she, I agree. She want to do the co-op. We never have to do it. But she wants to like she genuinely wants to do it it just things keep happening that make it no i don't i don't think rambo was a dent i think rambo was just like a, a kind-hearted person that that wanted to help this guy and wanted to be friends with this guy because he knew it was like the nice guy thing to do but at some point even him even he realized like yeah this guy i'm, I'm i think i'm best without him put up in delay we were 100 ready for tuesday then her work schedule changed then we were going to do it wednesday and they were like, oh, shit, after her work in the several days, then she was tired. And that, you know, now we're going to do it tonight. But now this is happening. It's like, this is the thing after a thing after a thing, right? So then next week, uh, you know, again, tentative. Let's say Saturday night for next week. If we do it, we want to do it on a Saturday night at this point, okay? Uh, I think it makes more sense to do it on a Saturday night because, again, more people attending or whatever. And it wouldn't, like, coincide with her work. Usually she doesn't work on... Oh, my God. He's still talking about this. We haven't started ask, uh, answering questions yet. So... Is there a... Um, oh, yes. Thank God there's an OP cuck. <laughs> Big paragraph of timestamps. Epic. Oh, man. This is going to save my ass. I think it's going to be fine. And the other, here's the other thing. I make my own schedule. This is not like, oh, no, the boss is going to be upset at us. What boss? I'm the boss. Right? So I do whatever I want. Like I'm the boss, except like said, people tell me what to do constantly. We've been having these late night chill streams where we just hang out and talk and have a good time. And people want more of them. They've outright told me the desire that over time they want more of these chill session streams rather than it being so focused on always gameplay, gameplay, gameplay <clears throat> or something set. They like the fact that every once in a while something impromptu or different happens, that the schedule will change. It feels a little bit looser, right? I'm down for that. Okay. I'm totally 100% down for that. And I hope you guys understand. If you do understand, thank you. If you don't understand, well, go I fuck yourself. You know, that's life. You're going <laughs> to fuck Why? Okay, but why why are we even expanding on that that side of things, right? You should have ended it. I uh, hope you guys understand. Thank you for understanding and for your kind response, and that's it. You don't want to keep attracting attention to the fucking idiot pieces of shit that don't understand. You don't, don't do that. It's bad for you, and it's bad for the stream. That these kind of things happen all the time, and you better learn to be adaptable, because if you're not, and you're one of these people who's just so stubborn, you're going to learn real fast that not everything goes according to plan the older you get. And then you got to find ways to call an audible, as they say in, like, professional football, you know, American football, you got to find a way to adjust on the fly and make stuff work. You know what I mean? Um, you can't just sit there and break down and cry or fall apart when things don't go according to your plans. So Lurking. in this case, listen. Yeah, big ups for the sub, you know, Mifune. Unless some crazy extenuating circumstances. Oh my God, there's no crazy anything. Nothing. End this. Let's let's skip to the timestamps. So we got stressful week, future co-op plans, adaptability and life changes. What? Uh, what? What? Okay, let's see Mr. Adaptable, Mr. Pigroach. What is he going to tell us about evolving? That's gone awry in the last couple of weeks that keeps, uh, you know, <laughs> basically being annoying that we can't make it happen, right? Right? And I agree with you there that, you know, when, you, when you're, you're down to consistency and you're used to consistency and you don't have that consistency, it can bother you. But understand something. This co-op is different. This is not... 
You know, Kat is not a paid employee of mine. She's not me, right? We're, we're doing our best to try to make this happen for you guys to do something a little special. It will happen eventually. And uh, I want to say thank you to those who are understanding and appreciative and being very nice uh, with you or with us, I should say, uh, over this, you know, it is what it is. And uh, now we're just going to have a chill night tonight where we kind of interact and talk and, and go from there. All right. And I'm going to keep checking because, like I said, uh, my controller is supposed to be delivered by Amazon over the course of this very stream. Uh, yeah, look at this. Oh, now it's, it's arriving tonight by 10 p.m. Then why tell me that it's coming? <laughs> All right. It actually shows the driver is still driving around downtown of my town delivering other packages, even though I was told it was going to be here tonight. So... We'll, we'll see if it ever shows up or not. If it shows up, I'll do the live unboxing, okay? We'll see what happens. Oh, and we got... Of course, we're buying stuff off the internet for a stream again. And okay. so let But, us like, oh, this is the thing I can't understand. Like, for me, uh, thinking about it, like, intuitively and what is the most rational thing to do, I'll just, like, get up and get in my car and drive five to ten minutes to the store and just buy myself a thing instead of being dependent on somebody else to deliver it to me at a time that is convenient i just get the fuck up and go and get it now i don't i don't see why he would just sit there and brainstorm when this is gonna come and what's gonna happen and whatever uh start tonight with some shout outs and let's start with some shout outs with the three month uh re-upping of his membership and says tell cat we miss her thank you for pizza box uh i got a dollar 76 tip from an anonymous tipper just $1.76. All right. Well, thank you, whoever that is. I appreciate that very much. That's our first contribution of the night. Then it looks like a $5 tip was received from Dwayne. Not only are you the boss, you are the final boss. There you go. I am a final boss, if you say so. I don't know the final boss of what. <laughs> I don't know what I would be the final boss of. Uh... But I appreciate the $5 tip and the sentiment. Okay. I've also received another $5 tip <clears throat> from Dan the Man. Thank you to Dan the Man for a $5 tip tonight. I appreciate that. Okay, so this is worthless. Cool. Boon Cuck. So we got... What do we got next? Dwayne as the current top... Shout out to Dwayne. The Rock? Uh, what have we got? What if what if they call them the cock? Haha, <laughs> Dwayne the Cock Johnson? You see? It's a double Johnson. Anyways. What the fuck? Uh, so we got interaction and shout out. So we got interaction with audience through shout outs and acknowledgements. Is they they're getting acknowledged like Roman Reign. Uh, recognition of contributions and engagement from viewers. This is the most fucking fabricated ass podcast ever. <laughs> Compare comparison with Xbox controller longevity and functionality. You know what? I was fucking shocked to find out that the the Xbox controller has got actual batteries inside them. I'm like, what, bro? What? Why? And yeah, it sucks. And you gotta buy like a separate rechargeable battery pack or something. Like, why? Why would you do that? And that's why I'm trying to sell my Xbox right now. Anyways, gaming hardware woes. We had gaming hardware mal malfunctions, USB cable and controller thumbstick issues. I am not sitting through this. Not happening. Uh, USB cable mal malfunctioning despite recent purchase. How long does he end up talking about his USB cable? Like actual five minutes. Fantastic. Content discussion and chill stream. Discussion on TV shows. Avoiding spoilers. Audience interaction in preference for non-gaming content. That is very interesting. And avoidance of political discussions during chill streams. I want to see that one. Avoidance of political discussions. Only talk about Fallout if it's not the TV show. Because number one, I'm only four episodes into the tv show and i don't want to be spoiled and number two lots of people have not watched it yet and want to watch it so they don't want to be spoiled uh as i get through the show with my wife and we watch more episodes i will eventually review the show but i need to actually watch the second half of it so i can't do that yet 
I received a two dollar tip. So I'm saying play Helldivers 2, it's your patriotic duty. No, we're not playing games tonight. The whole point is that people have been saying they want more chill stream style content. And this is what tonight is for, to do that. To give us our monthly quota of a late night chill stream where we can just hang out and talk. I'm not playing games tonight, okay? <clears throat> okay. All right, so what would you guys like to discuss tonight? Um, Politics. Let's talk about World War III and Israel versus Iran. Let's let's see what what hot takes we got about that. And once it arrives, like I said, I will. Um, okay, so let me tell you something. That I think Iran or like Iraq. I'm not sure exactly which one. So they have like I I, I assume like bombs or something, or they might have uh, rockets. But they're uh, apparently they're f uh, they're firing them into like I I don't even know. Like I've been told that they've been firing them at Israel, but I I don't really know about that. Okay. And Israel, I'm not even going to start talking about it because that's a, a very divisive topic for some fucking idiots on the internet that don't even know what's going on. Now, I know what's going on. And what I, I know is going on is that <laughs> they're all a bunch of idiots. <laughs> you know, this is how it's going to end. Of course, that's how it's going to end. Well, they're, I, you know, I think they're just a bunch of fucking idiots, okay? Anything else? What else would you guys like to discuss? <clears throat> Let's discuss some idiots and some dunces. Or not? I guess we're not, brother. No, exactly. No politics and stuff like that. Yeah, no. This, this is not a political stream. Everyone knows that. Um, you know, there's some world events going on right now, and a lot of people like to jump the gun and act like drama queens about them when we have no but idea what? what's going to happen or what is even really happening. <laughs> You literally did like a spinoff of what I just like pretended to do. Why are we going to freak out about that? <laughs> Somebody is an idiot. Uh, when when are you going to start freaking out? When you see a big white flash outside your window? <laughs> it's a gaming stream, right? Is is this when we're going to get hype? <laughs> so apparently there's like a, a deafening noise outside in the blinding lights. It must be a bunch of fucking Seattle hipster idiots, okay? Okay, uh, I received a dollar twelve tip from Fargo. How much are you a fan of the controllers with designs on them, like God of War Ragnarok or Spider Man? I I don't mind them. I think some of them look pretty slick. And if you're a fan of those things, like if you're a fan of God of War and you don't mind having a God of War controller all the time, or if you're a really big fan of Spider Man and you want to rep that, you know, go for it. You know, the reason I you would never see me with one of those controllers is usually they're limited edition. Usually they're they're harder to get. One yeah, the, DSP is the type of guy that is going to be like nuclear bombs dropping and he's going to be mad about his internet cutting off. ...to get, and I don't see the point of, of you know, going out of my way or spending more. If they were special and had like other features or were better than a standard controller, then I'd be like, it's worth it. But they're the same exact thing, just a different color scheme. It's not yeah. a big deal, right? You should buy one of those gadgets that you attach to your controller that make you better at video games. I don't know what that was, but they, they exist. So, you know, you're interested in it, go for it, but you probably would never see me with one of those. Or, you know, they were. I, I think some of them are for accessibility purposes, for disabled people to have an easier time. But he definitely should get them because he says he's getting, like, carpal tunnel or something. He feels it in his hands. He feels it building up. It's like uh it's like gout crystals. Oh, let's see here. Oh, speaking of gout crystals, by the way, I got a <laughs> I did some blood tests uh, a couple weeks ago because every year I like to, to vibe check myself. Acknowledge the tribal chief. Oh shut up, I was in the middle of a story. The final boss, he's the one you face after taking on all the lol cows. He comes down from his throne and says, Are you ready to eat it, Detroit, till I die, me a cat mob who is except except we're never gonna we're never gonna finish his story. That's never gonna end. Even if he's dead, he's gonna continue living on through the, the spirit, the unbeatable spirit of Dark Side Phil. So yeah, I went. Uh, I went and got myself a blood test. Everything was literally fine, uh, but I got higher, higher levels of uric acid, dude. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the gout. Uh, you guys, stay tuned for a hype gout announcement in a gout celebration stream. That's gonna be epic. Celebrate gout 100. <laughs> and we're gonna. You know what? Uh, I think that's gonna be a great social experiment. 
if I get gout, I'm going to compare myself to DSP and, and I'm going to try his method of treatment. You know, I'll just drink um, a cherry juice and I'll eat everything but red meat, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'll also try medicating it. So we're going to see who's going to cure their gout first. We're going to be gout brothers. Brothers in, in oh, gout. Uh, not brothers in arms, but brothers in feet. Two? I don't know what that is. Are you talking about the new Warhammer game? Uh, if that's the case, yes, we actually watched some gameplay of it on my React show a few months ago. And it looked pretty decent. So I might be interested in it in the fall. Yes, it's a, it's a maybe. Can I talk about Star Wars Our Outlaws drama? I don't know what the Outlaws drama is, so I can't say anything about it. What is the drama? No, Brandon, I've never had a single controversy in my 16 years as a YouTuber. I'm a very cookie-cutter, yep. kind of clean, squeaky-queen whistle guy. You know, no controversies here, of course. Zero. Not even one. What franchise would I like to see Return and get a sequel to? Oh, I'm not. Uh, we're not doing this. It's like, hey, would you like? do you like video games, Phil? Talk about some other thing. So here we got a fight stick review. Gaming hardware maintenance from the guy that always breaks his gaming hardware. And it sits on the floor covered in dust. Uh, I don't think he has a lot to, to add to that. Console reliability and repair issues. Frequency of chill with fill streams. Let's see this. What do we got about this? Because of that. Uh, oh, the controller is here, apparently. I can go get it. Cool. And I will get it in a moment. Um, It did get delivered, so we can do a live unboxing and everything. Okay? But. Um. Now, hold on. Now I forgot what I was saying. I got distracted. Hold on. Oh, so in regards to doing these chill streams, right? Basically, in February, people were saying they actually were enjoying me hanging out with them and talking more than gameplay. And I think that was in part because we were playing too many RPG, right? And that's ended now, thankfully. So I think that's not the case right now. But still, people were like, we like these chill sessions. Please do more. And I said, all right, I'd be willing. And then what ended up happening was there was one night where I remember we had finished all the games we were playing early and we had nothing to do that. And I said, all right, let's do it. Let's just do an impromptu chill session, right? So that worked out well. And then um, last month, if you remember, it was the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection where I was going to play it for a full day and then it didn't work at launch. So I was like, damn, I have like a whole night stream open. And that's when we did this and it worked. This month, it's the co-op that, you know, basically caused it. So yeah, every month we seem to be having a situation where hey we could do whatever and we chill and we have a good time right right now we got good attendance good engagement support is moving and you know it's not amazing or anything but hey i'm having a good time all right i'm going to go get the controller so if you're here live hold on if you're here on demand i'll literally be, be, be back in a microsecond okay so i'm back and there's some good news and possibly some bad news the good news is the controller is here for us to do a live unboxing of this new PS5, I think it's called like uh, Go. Oh, and he did a bunch of soy faces here, didn't he? All right. But the bad news is the USB cables that I got when I ordered them showed a standard USB on one side and a USB C on the other. I'm reading the box and it says USB C. No, you're a liar. No, Maybe you're a liar. Are both? No, there is no, there is no way he ordered the wrong cable. It, he just. There, uh, well, there is no way that they lied to him about the cable. He just ordered the wrong one. Because he was looking at the picture and not on the, the title of the actual product. USB-C, I didn't order that. Well, you did. The picture blatantly showed that... Oh, uh, yeah, the picture. It was a standard uh, cable on one side and a USB-C on the other. So I hope that this is correct. If not, I guess I got to return these now this week. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's not... Oh, my God. What is happening? What? What the fuck? What is this hairline? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Whoa. Whoa. God damn it. You're milking a human. <laughs> I cannot believe this, man. I gotta order more. Yeah, you Let's better order a... <laughs> a wig. I would just... Just... Cut it off at this point. Cut it off and, and let the beard grow. That's what we're going to do. What are we going to do now? Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's getting a tactical knife. Know, Home defense knife. Listed on Amazon. Half the time, it's fucking wrong. It's true. It's like they just don't care. They don't They don't check nothing. They just let anyone list anything. And uh, they end up with the wrong product. So let's find out. 
I hope it's a regular USB cable and not C to C. If it's C to C, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. The listing was wrong. Uh, the listing was wrong. Imagine nice imagine being such a fucking DSP. Imagine being such a DSP that you can't even admit that you just ordered the wrong cable off of Amazon. You just bought the wrong thing. It's happened to me before. But no, the listing was wrong. They lied. Not not only did they lie, they lied on purpose to defraud him and cheat him out of a perfectly good one side USB C and USB 3.0 on the other side type cable shit. Too. I like this cable. Well, hold on. Fuck it. Now I gotta return them. The, the PS5 has a USB-C port? Oh, does it? It does? And it works like that? Okay, hold on. Maybe I won't return them. There's a USB-C port on the PS5? I didn't even know that. Okay, hold on a second. Maybe all is not lost. Find out. I'll go over there and we'll see. Cable looks nice. Braided, although my last one was braided and it was a piece of shit. Broke within four months. Ten foot, so it's long enough to reach over here from the console. If it is, if it does have a C port, then I guess we're all right. I, I definitely I didn't. How long? How long is this? Oh. Like, why do you need a cable this long? All right. What is going out. on here? What is this setup? What is happening? Everything is like the least intuitive it can be. It's just under the regular one. It's on the front. It's on the front of the console. But why Why do you want to do that? Don't you have like a docking station to charge them in? Or just like you have multiple controllers? I don't understand. Happens. Uh, whatever. Box the con controller. We'll plug it in and see if it works and charges or not. Yeah, it's literally a cable, bro. You can buy a cable for like 50 cents and it's still going to get the job done. But look at this hairline. Like, man. Have you tried, like, combing it in a different way? Like, this is not working. It's not good. We should hit the hat goal more often. Ready? Okay. <laughs> what is so funny? Is he going to make a soy face? Yes, he is. Yes. Whoa, look. He's not like those other guys that do the faces. He has different gimmicks that he uses to make money off of people by exploiting him. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Whoa! Also, I mean, can we calculate how many degrees his mouth is tilted at? Because this is not normal. This is not. This No, we don't. We don't do that. This is some, like, AI-generated horror. This is, is not good. It's not healthy. Definitely not healthy. Wow, man. Wow, man. <laughs> Whoa. Well, here it is. Okay, bro, I All get it. It's purple. Glow. It's funny because on camera it looks blue, right? He's still balding, blue. though. It's purple. It actually is, <laughs> but it's a very deep purple. It's a deep, deep purple. Bro, it looks literally blue. It's a blue controller. This is blue. <laughs> or at least the way that he's calibrated his camera and his uh, his thing, it looks blue. It just looks blue. It's not blue. It, it is looking blue on the camera. I agree with you, but it actually is a deep purple color. Okay, so should I should I try and fix it? Let's see what what we can do here. So right click filters, uh, effect filters. We got color correction, and we're gonna tweak the hue out a little bit until this looks purple. Right, so like this technically, and then and then Dave looks like Shrek. What, bruh? Uh, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't look like that in real life. Like <laughs> yellow and green, or we can make it look like this. We can make him pink. Look at this, all the possibilities. Well, anyways, this shit is uh, this shit is blue.
It's blue until further notice. So to compare... Why is this fucking stuck? You gotta be kidding me. Get unstuck, piece of Which looks better? What's the better color scheme? What do you think? So now let's see. If I plug this in. Will it charge? It is. Ready? USB-C to USB-C. I plug it in. And it's charging. It's glowing. Look at that. That means it's charging. Initial charge. It's working. That's a good sign. It's glowing. Okay, dude. Like, it's what do you expect it to do? Cringe, but on camera, it looks red, doesn't it? Why are we wasting so much time that we're, like, glad that this thing that's supposed to be working is working? Did you expect it to be broken? The camera, I don't know. The co colors are off on this camera for some reason. The colors are it's off. It's actually glowing orange, yet it looks like it's glowing red. Maybe you're just, you're colorblind. I'm pretty sure this is just blue. Well, let's let's look up uh the blue uh dual sense controller, okay? And it's just this. Cobalt blue. Or maybe he bought this one, Galactic Purple, which is purple. But the cobalt blue is just blue because I mean, I'm I'm not colorblind. And this looks blue on the camera, but it's really orange. I don't know. Uh, uh, whatever. Whatever. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> is that you put the, the all the soy? Wow, man! Look at this! It's so cool, man! It's the galactic purple shit, man! Oh, it's the galactic purple. Okay, so it's this one, galactic purple, and it is purple. Look at that, yo! But it's like it's so weird because it looks it looks blue in in his footage, and I can't make it purple without making him look like Shrek, because I tried. Hey, this is it. Or at least even if I tweak it a little bit for it to look purple like this purple. Well, now this is not going to look purple. It's weird. Uh, but then he looks yellow like he got... I don't even know. Like he got tuberculosis. <sighs> slaps. It snaps. It slaps the cheeks. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Yeah, it's so cool. All right. Well, if it charges fine, and I, I'll, I'll use it as early as uh, Monday. Monday, I'm playing more Helldivers. So, I'll probably use it on Monday. I'll keep this one charging regardless. I'll actually plug this one over there. This one actually is charged now, so I can unplug it. Yeah, because uh, I want to get this plugged back to my Xbox controller, actually. Whoa, it was cool, yo. Whoa. All right, hold on. And we are gone because um, we are gone. Xbox controller. And we're back talking about fucking controllers, man. I hate you, dude. Your shit sucks so bad. What do we got here? Amazon Prime ad-free service controversy. And before that, we had a discussion on cable quality. Man, the, the shit sucks. Decision to retire, ask the king. Oh, is it retired? Isn't it going to happen after ask the king 100? Because that makes sense. Okay, let's see. Oh, my God. I don't even know. Let's start from here. He's going to tell us all about streaming services that he doesn't have or use or want. Or I don't even know. He doesn't even know about. But he's going to tell us all about it. Burnell? No, Burnell. Jeff Bezos charging $3 for no ads on Amazon Prime. Oh, I think and this is hilarious. Listen to this. We got a troll saying something about gamma radiation. I don't know anything <laughs> about it. Yeah, is he irradiated? Oh, man. Alert. You made him look like he has jaundice. Imagine his talks if he had that. The court jaundice combo would be unreal. 
Well, yeah, I mean, he doesn't look like that, I'm sure, because this made everything everything look worse in the background. So I'm pretty sure that this is more accurate to reality. But it's a big mystery with the, with the controller, because it just straight up looks like the blue model. And it doesn't matter, man. It literally doesn't matter. Someone is a piece of shit. Who's a piece of shit? Keemstar? From Kirk, what do you think of Jeff Bezos charging $3 for no ads on Amazon Prime? I think he's a, he's a piece of shit. I made an agreement with them, a year contract, which I paid for back in December, for a no ad video streaming service. All of a sudden, they think that they can change my agreement. They can't. I paid an, a, a year's worth of Prime in December for a year of ad-free video service. Oh, this is when they scammed him, right? Because they, they charged him for the streaming service, and he thought it was like they broke the law or something. Then they decided to change the terms in the middle. That's illegal. It really is. It's illegal. You can't what? do that. If there's a class action lawsuit against Amazon, they will lose. And best what? There is a class action Amazon against Amazon right now for it. Uh, they have no leg to stand on legally. You would. The only way that they could have done that legally is to say, we're going to put ads on everything. When your contract expires, it'll happen. So when it expires... Oh, that's... um, I don't know. They They probably could have done it, but they don't give a fuck. They probably just don't give a fuck. That's that's the the answer to most of these like big controversies with like mega corporations. They just don't give a fuck because they can afford not giving a fuck. You renew the contract, and you yeah, yeah, yada yada yada. Somebody wronged you, and now you're still not over it. Uh, I received a five dollar super chat from guitar player. He says I had the same problem with my controller. I guess it's a problem with those controllers. Um. With, with the PS5 controller, the, uh, the stick drift? I guess so. But I've also had, I also have stick drift on my Xbox controller. I just had it on all my controllers this gen. Every controller this gen seems to have the problem. Um, So it's kind of sad that they just can't make a controller that lasts. Okay. Poop, I can see your messages, yes. No galactic blue does not look more blue than purple. It's probably the way my camera picks the color up. That's all it is. It looks blue to me. Very blue. Sarah says, Amazon treats you like this, yet you still give them your customers and purchase and your ser their service. Amazon, for as many things that Amazon does wrong, <clears throat> Amazon is the best place to order online from when it comes to value when it comes to delivery, I lit like someone had said to me earlier tonight. Hey, I thought DSP, uh, he had this big thing when he was on the side scrollers where he was super proud of not shopping at Walmart because Walmart takes advantage of people and it exploits them to make a lot of money. And now he's like Amazon's biggest fan. He loves Amazon. He loves them. Even though they, you know, we're not going to get into that, but you know. Wait a minute. You know how Amazon treats their employees very nicely and kindly and amazingly. Controller started dying on your first stream. You ordered on your first stream and it, the controller is here for your late stream? Yes. Because I live yeah. right near the Amazon distribution centers. Amazon. And you also live right next to a fucking store. You could have just gone and bought it for like 15 minutes. It's based in Washington. You dummy. All of their distribution centers are within five miles of my home. So anytime I order anything from Amazon, it's usually two days or less. No, because that's, that's the thing. I I get it. It's a service, and you can buy whatever you want, whatever you want. But like, why would you bother somebody else with it, so they have to do the work when you can just go outside and nothing is stopping you? Uh, whatever. It's neither here nor there. It's just DSP lazy, basically. No matter what. Um, sometimes it's the same exact day. All right. So, yeah, basically, uh. It's that's I mean it's a huge service to use out here. It's it's very beneficial. So what the fuck? I can't click on this. Great. Hold on. Okay. Anytime now, Burnell. Anytime okay. now. <clears throat> All right. Uh, what was I saying? Now I got distracted. I don't remember. All right. Anyway, for those hanging out, thank you. For those chilling and supporting, thank you. 
We still got a ways to go because this is just an open stream to do whatever you guys. Oh, and got, uh, of course, by the way, of course, by the way, of course, by the way, of course, of course, we got an update on WWE champions because of course, by the way, we do, of course, Remember because it's a day that ends in Y. It's a day that ends in Y. So this is what we got. This is the latest and greatest of uh, Mr. Gamebox in the update. We got six, 614. <laughs> oh, on the zombie event. And who are the guys that you can pull? So here we got DSP is number 33, Mr. Down from the Rafters guy. Uh, this is, of course, uh, as always, just an estimate. There is no receipts on this. Uh, so this is all we got. We got solo contest, pre spring outbreak, and claim free contest points. I don't even fucking know. Um, so get zombies. Wow, you can get zombies. Who can you get? Damien Priest? You can get um, this dude. Uh, Drew McIntyre. You can get Dominic Mysterio as a zombie. Look at these. Oh, man. Those guys are super hype right about now. So, yeah. Epic. Epic, Phil. Good job, Burnell. Good job. Like, do you realize... Do you realize how fucking crazy it is that... He could destroy all of his trolls by just not playing this game and like saving up his money so he can have more confidence in himself and he could have more financial security and he could be living very comfortably and all the trolls would be fucking seething because this has never happened for DSP to have money and be able to like dab on everybody and fucking like clown on them. And then like this is never happening because I guess he doesn't want to destroy his own trolls either. He would rather destroy himself. 29 months as a member and says, did you watch the X-Men 97 yet? Watch it. No, I don't have, uh, what is it? Uh, Disney Plus. I don't have it. You know, I have very few services. I, ha I have um, Max and I have Amazon Prime Video. That's it. We have nothing else. We don't even have Hulu anymore. We got rid of that. Max is very good, by the way. If I had to recommend one service, I would recommend Max. Because, of course, I mean, The Sopranos is on it. The Wire is on it. There's a bunch of other shows. Like, True Detective is on it. And just when it comes to shows, yeah, you, you got a lot of them. We only have those two. Um, you know, we regularly watch... And you also have a, a shit ton of quality movies, too. Not... Well, you do have a bunch of filler, but you have a bunch of filler everywhere. Um, but, yeah, I would, I would recommend Max. I would not recommend Prime. There's not enough stuff on it. And Netflix is, like, is just full of filler and dog shit stuff for, like, Zoomers. Max, because it has a lot of, like, reality TV shows that are, like, like uh, things about cooking, things about homes and homemaking house hunting, silly stuff like that, you know, all world travel. We like that kind of stuff. We like to watch that kind of stuff together. Um, uh, Fed Roger, enjoy your ban. Oh, if, if the chat works, it froze. Yeah, enjoy your ban. Because you purposefully <laughs> spelt my wife's name like that, so don't come back. Why? Oh, cat. Oh, yeah, okay. You purposefully spelled my wife like that. And also, we got another shot at the, the bald spot. And it's, it's not looking good, man. I wish I would stop attracting attention to it but it's just so obvious it's just so distracting like look at this shit what the fuck back it's not funny it's not amusing. oh my god no don't give us a, the whole like around the world shot we don't need to see all of it holy um, fuck so. <clears throat> he got the hairline of like a 70 year old oh uh, let's see what was i gonna say i don't know you, you, oh your hair gone? We don't have Disney Plus, Grim Ripper, so we can't watch the X-Men show. Um, I've heard good things about it. People are saying it's good. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't really... Oh, this... I, I don't get this, man. When somebody tells me, well, I don't have this, so I can't watch this. And I, I ask them, like, have you tried, like, downloading it off the internet? And for them, it's like... Because through my entire life, there was nothing wrong with pirating stuff off the internet. Because that shit on the internet costs a bunch of money that I don't have to give to fucking pirate it. But it's like for some people, they've never had it happen. And they think like it's this this uh, huge crime that you're going to get put in prison in. And in most countries, nothing's literally going to happen. Literally nothing. You don't even need a VPN. I care about the continuation of a show that I watched in the 1990s. I just really don't. Like if you told me the original Ninja Turtles was coming back and continuing today, I'd be like, I don't care. I'm 42 years old. I, I have no desire to see that plot line continue in my adult life. Um... So, there you go. 
All right. So yeah, X Men ninety seven. I've heard it's great. I've heard the animation's good. The plots are good. I I don't really care, and I'm certainly not getting Disney Plus and paying for it to get it to watch it. So, <laughs> but it's like, oh man, I don't know. You can make this. You can de decline something and also have it be positive instead of just saying, well, I don't care. And I get it. I get it. You might not care. And that might be what you want to say. Like, yeah, I, I don't care about this. Why would I watch it? But j just don't say it like that. So I think it's it's officially time to officially retire. Ask the king. There hasn't been yes. one in a while. I haven't seen demand for it to return. This is better. Uh, What do you think? I mean, I, as I said, I was trying to get Ask the King to 100 episodes. And even then, I'd say the last three, four years that we were doing Ask the King, I was already an interactive streamer. And I was saying to you guys that I felt the show was outdated and didn't really have a place, but people kept asking for it and saying, please keep doing it because it's part of your legacy content. It's the, like the last long running show you have. You've you, everything else, like the weekend preview, the channel updates, the release day unboxings, the eight live podcast, all that stuff is gone. We would like to see you continue one piece of content from your past. And that's what Ask the King was for a while. But the King of what? Right, Ask who? Doing Should be renamed to Ask Philip. Podcast, the level one podcast that has a ton of Q&A in it. We do other streams at Q&A. We have late night chill streams like this. If this is the future, then why are we lingering in the past? Oh, here's the thing. Let's make this worse. How about he does Ask the King on the podcast once a week? And it's his own segment and he uploads it separately. So this way he can pad out the number of Ask the Kings until it gets to 100 and then just end it. That sounds good. That's actually a good idea. So he, he does the Q&A once a week, answering questions from some like shitty community post or something, and he doesn't do Q&A for the rest of the week. Like, no, no Q&A at all. What is the purpose of saving questions up for Ask the King if basically, you know, there's no p place for it in the content anymore, right? So. Yeah, my feeling is Ask the King is... Because, like, every every single thing he does could be done infinitely better. Like, infinitely better. And you don't need to be, like, really a genius to do it. I'm not saying we would never bring it back. Maybe for a special event in the future if we need it. But as of now, it is officially retired. I don't see a reason to be, you know, actively doing it, right? Derek, yes, the Beyond Two Souls co-op is now... Tentatively rescheduled for next Saturday. Oh my god, Derek, fuck you for asking about this. Oh, this is the end of the video, isn't it? I'm gonna read your comment out because just doing that alone gives attention to these idiots. Oh yeah, this guy, by the way, he wanted on a 40 minute, not a 40 minute, an hour long rant about these idiots that he's ignoring. And for some reason during that rant, he says that he's gonna have segments like this every once in a while. Which I don't understand what that is set to achieve, other than... You're just uh, reinforcing the idea in the Den's head that this is your enemy, you guys. We should unite uh, in front of this enemy. And unite means that you should support Phil. That's basically it. Because he doesn't really facilitate a community. Yeah, man, I agree with you, but I'm not even going to read your comment out because just doing that alone gives attention to these idiots. But uh -huh. I appreciate your comment and I agree with what you. What is the comment? That you're right and they're idiots. Thank you for that. Wow. Okay. I think it's time... Let's, we actually, if you can believe it, I've been doing this for an hour. Does it feel like I've been doing this for an hour? No, because I skipped through most of it. But uh, you're right, Phil. It does really feel like you've been doing it for an hour. Uh, what do we got here? Helldivers 2 Alone in the Dark. Ants? Idea for Fallout Review. I saw that uh, Mr. Review Tech, you, we can end this stream on a Review Tech note. Because why the fuck not? Um, is it RTU Streams? Because he's in like an existential crisis right now, apparently. Is it here? Yeah, look at this. He did another stream on Phil because he's changing so hard. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, and he's got a he's got a different set. Look at this. Wow, he's improved so much. But but he's still high though. That was his main problem is that he gets high and everything gets super boring, and um, um, he plays the soundboard too much. And uh, did I say that everything is super boring? I'm using the Apogee. So what do we got here? We got a DSP segment. It's not a whole segment. It's not a whole stream. It's just a segment, brother. Uh, but what was he acting out about? Oh, yeah. Of course, the first comment, which happens to be the top comment, says, This man is so fucking high. LOL. 
Um, and yeah, you spend this entire stream watching lol cows while stoned out of your mind and spamming the soundboard in between 40 minutes existential pauses. Great stuff. That's a legitimate, genuine comment right here. <laughs> Which, there is nothing wrong with spending the entire stream watching lol cows while stoned out of your mind. Rich Let me just make that clear. Again, it's so dim. Really? Uh, who was his biggest pay pick? I mean, I actually don't know, but, um, good for him, I guess. I don't, I don't think he can attract a bunch of, uh, a bunch of pay picks because he's just not that interesting. Just not. Uh, can we get a Meerkat High episode? Uh, last time it was. Uh, the last Swaycast was. When, when he had the, the big meltdown, I was high for like the, the last three hours of it. Uh, then we got the unofficial man return. This is like two weeks ago. So apparently he had like the big segment about detractors. Uh, but I don't know if anybody clipped it. Did they? Oh, I think it was on this channel, the Bad Moments channel. Yeah, this is it. I don't know how recent this is. What's going on, guys? We are back from another RTU video. So last time, Rich Rage quit Twitter. Yeah, so Rich Rage quits Twitter. And this what happens. Is this posted on somebody else's channel? Or is this posted on the Rich channel? Because it's a clip. That you paid well, regardless, let's, uh, let's watch this video. Then, up till today, he did not stream. He put out the occasional video. But he happened to put this clip up on his RTU as a... But he happened to put this clip up four days ago on his stream channel. Well, I know something of it is, is that I know there's like, there's some people who exist. They hate, hate Phil to okay. an unhealthy degree. That's, uh, there's a group of people that exist for everything that is like that. Cause the, the internet is just like that nowadays. There if it was, uh, yeah, hating on stuff is kind of trendy right now. And it, it's very cathartic for many people because you get to let it all out and then not worry about it. They're just as bad, if not worse than Phil's dents. And, oh, and there's, there's definitely people in the detractors that are just as bad, if not worse than Phil's dents. That's absolutely a hundred percent. It's statistically guaranteed to be like that. You just, yeah, you're not really saying anything unreasonable here. Like so caught up in their hatred of him. They don't even realize it. Well, here is the thing. I'm going to repeat this again. Like, I can't stand Pat the NES Punk. I think he's a pretentious... Oh, I've seen this clip. This clip fucking sensitive. sucks. But yeah, it it's literally... Oh, yeah, this clip is dog shit. Okay, I'm going to summarize this this uh, for you. It's basically there are some people that watch DSP too much and they're annoying, but I'm not talking about all detractors. There are detractors that are cool, and also there are detractors that are cool. But I'm not talking about all of them, but some of them are idiots, but some of them are cool. Basically, this is it. And yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to end the stream now, I guess. Because we made it past three hours, which is now my arbitrary... Well, it's not a goal. I'm not trying to do it, but sometimes I would just look at the clock and I'm like, 45 minutes? We just made it 45 minutes? It's different when I'm stoned. Uh, so anyway, shout out to this channel to go and watch it, I guess, if you want the whole clip. But it's really not worth it. So yeah. Um, is there anything else that I might have forgot? I want to get that settled first. Right now. Let's see if somebody tagged me in something. Uh, somebody on Discord says uh, tagged me in something and said that. Let me just find it. How do you even do that shit? on? Oh, mentions. Okay, here it is. Um, the DSP might have Kleinfelter syndrome. So let's look that up. Cause I saw I was tagged in this today. I don't know what it means. So Kleinfelter syndrome. What does it just do? Sometimes called Kleinfelter's KS or XXY is where boys and men are born with an extra X chromosome. What does that mean? What are symptoms? Weak muscles, slow motor development, taking longer than average to sit up, crawl and walk. Delay in the speaking. Problems at birth such as testicles that haven't descended from the scrotum. 
Okay, I, I, <laughs> I would need some uh, more thorough examination to come down to a diagnosis. I don't know about this. First time I'm hearing this, uh, but it, it might be him. It might not be him. There's many, many uh, different theories that must have uh, must have made this. So I, I don't fucking know. But thank you for tagging me in this. If you come across something else you want to tag me in, I might show it on stream. I might not. Let me check my uh, my Twitter. Let's see. There might be something interesting to it. And uh, OP Boone. What is this guy says? So this is an old suggestion. Uh, suggestion box post. Make idea for DSP Reacts or DSP Gaming. A show where you react to gaming hot takes submitted by the viewers. Oh, man. Interesting. Interesting. Gaming hot takes submitted by the viewers. So basically like uh, Anthony Fantano does in his uh, Let's Argue thing. Where, yeah, well, basically he asks somebody for their hot takes and he talks about it. And it's one-sided and it's weird as, as you might expect because you can't really have a two-sided conversation. Um, sure. I mean, whatever he does is going to end up bad at some point because it's him making it. So it's just a matter of time. <sighs> and what else we got? I guess that's it. I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, when is a flathead emote for the channel coming? Uh, I, I guess any time. I just need to get around to making it. But there's so much things I, I need to get around to making and working on and talking to people about that I just don't know what to do first. So I don't do any of it. And this is how I win. Uh, and yeah, the you can use the one that's... What, what is that one? Literally the flathead one. There is kind of a flathead, but that one is called something else. I don't I don't know. It's fucking weird. Go away. Stream is over. Uh, Yong out. Fuck all you hoes! Detroit till I die, motherfucker!